They go empty backfield. Giannis Davis lines up on the line. Five eligible to Frales with good time. Will throw deep down the middle. Wide open, Broussard. They won't catch him. It'll be 86 yards on the first play from scrimmage to Frales to John Broussard. And we said it in the open. If the running game for San Jose State is going to happen, they have to pass the ball. To Frales kicks it off, trips to the short side of the field. He gets Broussard open on the post. And that was just pitch and catch in the end. Remember, three receivers to the Frales' left side here. The shallow receiver crossing underneath, and Broussard getting over the top. Elgin Simmons got beat badly with the deep ball as Fresno State has benched their best NFL prospect, even better than the running back right, Marcus McCauley, due to ineffective play. And Elgin Simmons, the uh, senior from Hawthorne High School in L.A., got cooked on the first play of the game. Here's Jared Strubeck for the point after. So what a way to start, huh? First yeah. play from scrimmage, 86 yards downfield. If you're a quarterback, it's exactly how you want to start it off. You know, San Jose State has had a chance to beat Fresno State the last few years has been kind of blowouts, but if you go back to 2002, John Broussard's older brother, Jamal, dropped a potential game-winning touchdown in the final play of the game, and John said, I'm going to try to win this game today for my brother, Jamal. Yeah, there's absolutely no way John was dropping this ball right in his hands. Perfect pass by Adam Tefralis. Set up. Great play call to kick this game off. Knowing Fresno State was going to be a little aggressive, end up in man coverage. They just took all the underneath routes to influence and let Broussard one-on-one -on -one to the outside. 16 seniors are playing their final home game today for the Spartans. Stefratis will be back next year, but uh, John Broussard and James Jones, their two best wide receivers, are saying so long today to Spartan Stadium. Of course, they have the bowl game coming up in Albuquerque two days before Christmas. Stefratis with his 16th touchdown pass of the year, Mike, versus just six interceptions. The, the efficiency numbers for Stefratis this year compared to last year remarkable. The improvement. Yeah, absolutely juxtaposed compared to last year. 48.6% passing last year. More interceptions than touchdowns this year. He's absolutely turned it around. But a huge part of that, Dick Tomey told us, that this new quarterback coach, Marcus Arroyo, a guy that actually played the position, was extremely successful here with the Spartans, came back. He's now being coached by a quarterback, and he's taught to Frolis how to read the game, how to play the game at that position, and manage what you do on the field. There's Joe Fernandez, the son of former San Jose State Spartan great Mervyn uh, Fernandez. Mervyn Mervyn, who played for the L.A. Raiders for many years. And I think he's here today. Jared Strubeck to kick away. Chaston West is also back for Fresno State. This will go to Fernandez, the senior. And he'll be tackled right around the spot where Jacob French was tackled on the return for San Jose State. Only an eight-yard return. David Bowen, a backup Cornerback in on the tackle for San Jose State, along with backup linebacker Chris Reese. And Josh Shirley, starting safety for Fresno State, absolutely sent a message on that return. He had a huge block on the return. There's so a lot of passion in this game already. Here's Tom Brandstater, Mike, the embattled quarterback of the Bulldogs. He started their first six games. They booed him a lot. They benched him for a couple of games. He said partly his numbers aren't great this year due to a rib injury suffered in week two against Oregon. Wayne Wright in the offset eye, number 32, is going to be the big player for Fresno State today. Play action. Grant Stater going down the field, broken up and intercepted by Christopher Owens. And Owens breaks a tackle to Fernandez. Down the sideline, and he's finally going to be under tackle by Wright at around the 30-yard line. Grant Stater was going deep for Chaston West, and Christopher Owens, the other cornerback to Lowry, comes up with the interception. And this game going all San Jose State's way right now. Coach Tomey told us yesterday that because Lowry has been so good on his side, teams have been going after Owens. And Owens, just a sophomore this year, has grown a ton because of it. He's been faced with pressure that time. A great job of baiting Grant Stater. Stayed high above the receiver and cut at the last second that's it that is textbook if you're a corner on how you play the post boy what a start for san jose state their first play on offense 86 yards and a touchdown and now their first play on defense fresno state trying to come with a deep ball off play action and owens comes up with the interception 
You know, Coach Pat Hill told us during the week that he's been told all week long about how they were going to get their butts kicked in this game. And you could hear in his voice how feisty he was saying that. But right now, San Jose State is taking it to him. And I know Coach Pat Hill isn't very happy. No, he's not happy about a 4-7 and seven record. They are 4-3 and three in the WAC, though, the same record that San Jose State has for Fresno State. Their first losing year, first non-bowl campaign since 1998. It's the same formation they used to open the game. They are going to motion Davis to to Frattis's right. To Frattis will throw. Now under pressure. And he'll throw it a little too high for Davis and incomplete. As he got some pressure up the middle. Take a look at the players around to Frattis. Giannis Davis again the featured back. He is 53 yards away from 1,000 on the year. Collier will be his lead blocker. Clark the tight end. Jed Jones and Broussard, a couple of very good wide receivers. Matt Cantu is the best on their offensive line as the senior plays his final home game here at Spartan Stadium, the left tackle. And they like to run the football at 183 and a half yards a game. Second best in the conference and number 17 in the nation. And there's the guy, Giannis Davis. Going with the unbalanced line right now. They are going to uh, motion out of the eye formation. Jacob French lines up on the line of the timeout called it by San Jose State. All those big guys didn't know where they were supposed to go. You know, they've been playing this unbalanced line. Coach Tomey told us they have tight ends who can catch the ball, but they don't feel comfortable about their tight ends being able to block. And so they're moving the big guys over to get that unbalanced look. Pretty quick start, huh? We played just one minute and 44 seconds. We've already had a touchdown for San Jose State and this interception by Christopher Owens. Tonight on Comcast Sportsnet, the Kings hold court against Tim Duncan and the San Antonio Spurs. Jim Cozumar will get things started with House Party Live at 4.30, and they'll tip it off at 5. Kings at Spurs tonight only on Comcast Sportsnet. Greg Papa, Mike Podolsky, Scott Marsh downstairs. Adam Trefrellis and the Spartans on the game's first play. 86-yard touchdown pass to John Broussard. And the interception by Owens. And now they'll face a second and 10 from Pat Hill's 29-yard line. They go into an eye formation. Jacob French lines up as a fullback. Now they motion again, Mike, into this empty set. And they have five eligible on the line, and three go right. Quick throw to Jacob French. And he does not get very much there as the outside linebacker Lane on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Let's take a look at Fresno State's uh, defense. And there's a very young uh, group up front. Tyler Klutz is their best player on the front line with five quarterback sacks. Dwayne Andrews, the middle linebacker, 79 tackles. Good for ninth in the whack into the defensive backfield. Safety Josh Shirley is their second leading tackler with 71. The number to look out for today is number 17, Marcus McCauley. How much will he play in his final game? The graduating senior is off to the NFL. Out of the shotgun now, inside handoff to Davis. Tries to get wide, breaks a tackle and runs for a first down. Down across the 30, up to uh, down to around the 28-yard line goes Giannis Davis, who needs 53 yards today, Mike, to get to a grand. At 5'7", 180, you know, not the biggest of backs. And his legs are moving so fast that you can't tell how fast he truly is. But he has great speed out there, just got the corner, really earned it with the speed off the outside and gained the extra yards. Ran right through free safety. Vincent Mays, a senior for Fresno State, playing his final game out of uh, Rancho Cordova. Of course, the Bulldogs are done. They're not going to a bowl game. A few of their better players on offense, including Wright, will play in the Hula Bowl. But for most of them, this is the final game of the year. Davis came in motion, coming left now. And he breaks one tackle and gets down to around the 15-yard line. That was Josh Shirley, the safety that came flying up, and Davis able to get off that hit. Nice job of Davis getting low, getting underneath the tackle and getting the extra yards at the end because Shirley had him dead to rights. Davis has been tiptoeing around a little bit back there. Coach Tomey told us that he wanted him to hit the hole harder, go downhill, be a downhill back. Obviously, at 5'7", 180, you can't be a, you know, a one-gap guy the whole time. But you have to hit the hole faster and then make your moves once you get to that second level. They motion him out again. French, the lone back to Frattis. Will dump it out to Davis. Good block by James Jones, the wide receiver. And he's very near to a San Jose State first down inside the Fresno State 10-yard line. 
Interesting formation, the way they're coming him out and flexing him out, putting him on the line and uh, throwing the ball more to Davis out in open space. Well, Good block by Jones as well, Mike. Coach Tomey told us that Fresno State was just more physical up front. That's what they were. A defensive line is strong. 27 sacks on the year. So what do you do to take them out of the game? You get the ball to the outside in a hurry. If you can do that, you can wear down some of those big guys, take advantage of your speed on offense, take away their pressure on defense, and get something rolling on offense. Dick Tomey has revitalized programs before, both in Hawaii and Arizona. He's doing it here in San Jose. Third down and two. Play action. Trefatis will roll and throw. Caught by Callier, and he's into the end zone or very near to it. He's got the first down, and he's got the touchdown. Touchdown, San Jose State and James T. Callier. This is all about execution. The Spartans are executing exactly what they have to do right now. They're getting their assignments done, and they're playing with 11 men across the board. See, just a nice play-action fake inside. This is where Tafralis is really strong. When you give him play-action, get him outside the pocket. Don't make him sit back there and just be a pure passer. And then Callier, the fullback, using his strength at the end. He gets upended, but finds the end zone. Callier's fifth touchdown of the year, his third receiving. Strubeck with the point after, and what a start. We've not even played four minutes yet, Mike, and it's 14-0 Spartans. Now they're ramped up. They're going their way to a bowl game, and for Fresno State, it's their final game of the year. Second touchdown pass thrown by Tefranis. This one rolling left, and a nice catch and run by Callier. Well, Pat Hill has never lost to San Jose State. He beat them last year 45-7. to The last three games have been blowout victories for the Bulldogs, but Dick Tomey Spartans off to a lightning quick start. Lead 14 to nothing. They have not won since 1990. They beat them November the 17th of 90 to clinch uh, the Big West Conference Championship and a berth in the California Raisin Bowl the last time they went bowling. Chaston West is back to return the kickoff of uh, Jared Strubeck. 14-0 Spartans, just three and a half minutes into this one. Beautiful Saturday afternoon at Spartan Stadium. Crowd of over 20,000. As this one's going to be taken by West, going to come back the other way. Bad decision. Owens hits him, tries to turn that corner. He's tackled on his one-yard line. Christopher Vetter got down there, the safety. Nice kickoff, and he tried to come back the entire way across the field, Mike. Well, they obviously had a wall set up to try to get out to the field. The return was to the field. Couldn't get there. San Jose State is just playing like their hair is on fire right now. All the blue shirts down there trying to make the tackle. Vetter, what a solid tackle. As an open field tackle, that is tough to get both arms around him, get wrapped up like that. Sometimes you just hope that you hold on to a jersey. Better made an outstanding tackle. Spartans only have two returning starters on defense, and they're both playing different positions from a year ago, and Better is one of the two. He was a cornerback last year, now playing as a safety. First and ten from the five-yard line. Let's see if they give it a right out of the eye. They do come in left side, and he squeaks out to around the eight-yard line, a pickup of three for Dwayne Wright, who is already well over 1,300 yards on the year. He has a very good blocking fullback in Vircher. There, Pasco, the big tight end, a former high school quarterback in Chaston West, and Joe Fernandez trying to pick it up for the injured Paul Williams. Very young and uh, injured offensive line, Chris Denman is the best of the bunch, a former walk-on, playing his final game as a Bulldog over at right tackle. Second and seven. Here's Wright again, and they need him in the hole. He breaks one tackle of Demasha Jones. Crosses the 10 and picks up about three. Third down coming up for the Fresno State Bulldogs. We're going to look at San Jose State. They lost nine starters on defense. Freddie McCutcheon is the most uh, veteran of their young defensive line, a junior. Matt Costello, as Mike talked about earlier, fifth in the entire nation in tackles over 12 a game. And Lowry is the guy who has all the publicity with eight interceptions to tie a Spartan record, but Christopher Owens has already picked up one today. Third and three. And a short throw and a catch by Pasco, the tight end for Fresno State's first down out across their 20-yard line. Bear Pasco. Taking advantage of the zone, San Jose State just sitting back in a straight cover two, 42 look, and nickel defense. 
Pasco did a nice job sitting down, finding the hole, and getting moving the chains, getting that first down. His given name is McKenna, but uh, he goes by Bear. Bear's a much better football player. Uh, like no, he was no a quarterback question. in high school. A lot of guys that play at the next level are in high school. Oftentimes, you put your best athlete back there at the quarterback position since he's running everything. First and ten for Fresno State. They go into an I formation. And a handoff to right up the middle. Good cutback. He's tough to bring down. He slides and just finds openings. He has very good vision. He picks up seven yards there before Christopher Vetter, the safety, knocks him down. That's really been Wright's strength all year long. He hits the hit, he hits the hole going downhill. You see him hitting it strong, and then once he gets to that second level is when he makes his first move. If you try to make your first move too early, you get stalled behind the line of scrimmage, and you get tackled there. He gets downfield, and then he cuts and gets the extra yards. Pretty good game last weekend, last Friday at Louisiana Tech when he was five yards away from a 300-yard rushing game, and he scored the winning touchdown in the final minute of the game on a 33-yard run. Mike, he had, he had six runs of 20 yards or more, and he had chances to break those for touchdowns. He has lost a little speed as he picks up the first down. He is recovering from a very severe knee injury. He tore his left patella tendon back on September the 11th of 2004. Missed the remainder of that year, of course, and then he also missed all of last year. Well, he was rehabbing all last year. Caught a little screen pass versus Kansas State in September of 2004. Tore that patella tendon. That's a huge injury to come back from. A lot of guys don't make it back. He rehabbed his way back, and Coach Pat Hill told us he's still got an upside in terms of speed. Grant Stater on the roll, throws short to Wright, who typically has very good hands. He was well defended that time by Vetter, the safety in San Jose State. We talked to Dick Tomey yesterday, Mike, and he's very aware of the, the screen game. They like to throw the ball quite a bit to Wright out of the backfield. Well, and he makes a good point. You know, Tomey's been around the game for so long. He said good teams run the football. That's the first thing they do. Then they run play action and screen you to spread you out. Fresno State's been efficient with that all year long. It hasn't showed up in the wins and loss column, but they're a very good screen team. Second and ten. They have a slot formation at left for Rand Stater. And the handoff goes to right up the middle. And there's Matt Costello, the middle linebacker, who was in on the tackle as we head downstairs for an update from Scott Meyer. Scott? All right, Greg, thank you. If you take a close look at the Fresno State helmets today, you'll notice something noticeably not there, and of course that's the Bulldogs, which has become a tradition under Pat Hill. For the last three weeks, they haven't played with the Bulldogs on their helmets. That's because, obviously, going through a seven-game losing streak, the players and coaches felt like they hadn't earned their dogs. They took them off. They've won three straight, but they're still not on today. Greg, back up to you. And you see that V for Valley. In the great Central Valley of California, the honor of the no Bulldogs. Third down and five. Grant Stater out of the shotgun. And it is caught by Joe Fernandez for a first down, pushed out by Christopher Owens. And as Fernandez playing his final game, the senior he mentioned earlier, his dad, Swervin Mervin, but a great San Jose State Spartan he was back in the early 1980s. Yeah, and Joe now, a great student as well as a great athlete here at Fresno State. He's actually already graduated working on his master's degree now. But he's been the senior, or he's been the leader for this, this receiving core. You know, they have a bunch of freshmen out there along with him. He's been the guy that's brought all those young kids along. Coach Pat Hill told us his leadership has been a big reason why guys like Chast and West have really showed up. Good drive for Fresno State. The start of the course following the kickoff return by West back on their five at the yard line. They run to Anthony Harding on this carry, and he gets hit pretty hard right up the middle. Harding is uh, one of their three running backs they will mix in, right? Lonnie Miller will also play, and Harding, a true freshman from Turlock, got blown up there by Demaja Jones. And Jones, playing that outside linebacker position, did a nice job knifing downhill, got inside his blocker, and made the tackle. Tenth play of the drive. Coming up for Fresno State as Harding lines up to the right of Brand Stater in the shotgun. There's the sophomore quarterback, Chaston West, stays on his feet and picks up a Fresno State first down. And this is a nice drive to stabilize the game for the Bulldogs after the way this game started. Yeah, Fresno State just getting back into it now, but San Jose State was just running the board. First play out of the box to Frawless, hits the big post to Broussard, and they come back. James T. Callier catching a play action pass and getting in the end zone. The Spartans had it going early. 
Three and a half minutes into the game, Dick Tomey had jumped Pat Hill by a score of 14-0. And Fresno State, a very impressive drive. First and 10 on the Spartan 40-yard line. Here's Harding coming right, and he's tripped up in the backfield and dropped for a loss there by Jaron Gilbert. A defensive end, the sophomore for San Jose State. A very young front forward. In fact, we were talking to Tommy yesterday, and he said he was reminded him of his famous, uh, favorite singing group from the 50s, the, the four freshmen. Yeah. As for a while, he was playing four freshmen until he got Freddie McCutcheon back. He was out early this year with a dislocated kneecap, and the junior is there to stabilize that front. And he said that the back seven have really been the strength of the defense, but it's a testament to how well that they've played with all those young players on that D-line for that defense to perform as well as they have. I'm too young to remember the four freshmen, Mike. I know you have all their there on a third down or second down that's third down coming up for Fresno State third and long Demetrius Jones on the tackle for San Jose State so third and ten here this part of the field kind of a no man's land they may be in two down territory anyway we'll see how they play it well and you can expect to see pressure on this play by San Jose State trying to get Fresno to throw the underneath up the quick stuff to make the tackle short of 10 yards. Weston Moore, the two move guys go left. Joe Fernandez lines up right. Now Moore will flex out even further. Third and 10, Brand Stater. He's going deep for Fernandez down the sideline. Nice coverage there by Owens. Stride for stride with him. Perfect coverage. Owens got that interception early on defense for the Spartans. And then he comes back and is step for step with Fernandez. You see both of them playing a little hand game there, pushing off of each other. But he made Brandstater throw that ball too far downfield, overthrow Fernandez because of the great coverage. Now they are going to bring in the punter, Kyle Zimmerman. What a great drive. 13 plays, 55 yards. They had the ball for seven minutes, but they will punt it away to James Jones, standing back at the 10-yard line. Zimmerman trying to pooch it inside the 10. Land softly and be down right at the 10 yard line. And nicely done there by Kyle Zimmerman, the junior punter from Visalia. San Jose State gets the ball back. They've already got a couple of touchdown throws from Tefralis on their first two series. We'll check them out in the third when we come back. Well, we go from college football to college hoops tomorrow on Comcast Sportsnet as Notre Dame travels to Maryland to take on the 19th ranked Terrapins. That would be a Big East ACC showdown tomorrow at 3.30 right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Today we're watching an uh, old rivalry from the Western Athletic Conference. This rivalry dates back to 1921. They played in the PCAA and the the Big West, now it's the, uh, the WAC Conference. And it's to Fratis. Hands off to Jones, who lined up in the backfield out of a shotgun. That's James Jones, the wide receiver. He can do it all, though. He can catch it, he can run it, he can throw it. Marcus McCauley, mentioned him earlier, Mike, who has lost his job as their starting uh, cornerback, maybe the best pro prospect on the field for either side on the tackle for Fresno State. Yeah, Jim Thorpe Award candidate out there for Fresno State. And just hasn't had the production that they expected out of him this year. Coach Pat Hill benched him, came back with some other guys. Now he's in the field. He is a great athlete out there on that defense. And he's still supposed to go in the middle of the first round of the NFL draft coming up in April. To Flattis, after looking left, goes back right. Jones retreated, breaks a tackle, and then runs for a first down. Nicely done by James Jones, the senior from Gunderson High down here in the South Bay. Well, the play before, we see him line up his quarterback and take the shotgun snap and run the ball to the outside and a little bit of that spread look, the spread option. Then he comes back and catches a pass out there as a wide receiver. He's a very heady player. He's really dedicated himself. Last year, he had some off-field problems, was having some rough times here as a Spartan. This year, he's come back and been focused all year long. Now, he also had some on-field problems a year ago. He himself counted uh, 10 situations where he dropped a pass or ran the wrong route a year ago. And that's his 60th catch on the year right there for a first and 10. They go into an eye now. Callier ahead of uh, Giannis Davis. Look how low the fullback gets down. And the lead blocking fullback. Davis. Finds a crack and picks up four yards. Nice job by Davis getting up there, sticking his nose in the hole and getting the tough yards inside for the little guy. 
Now they've been running the ball extremely well. In fact, we have uh, two of the very best rushing schools in the Western Athletic Conference. And a big determiner who wins this game today will be the yardage total between Giannis Davis and Dwayne Wright. And going to a shotgun now for Tefralis. They've been using this empty set a lot today. Five eligible on the line. And Tefralis throws it away. Look for Jones and threw uh, apparently there. And that's a little bit of a flashback to years gone by when he was always wasn't so accurate. Well, that's obviously a miscommunication between quarterback and receiver. Tefralis thought he was going to be deeper in his route than he was. Jones slipped a little bit as he was running that route and pulled up short. Oftentimes when you see it like that and the ball is off, it's not always the quarterback. It's distance and depth of route. It's cut the way these guys come out, whether they come out inside or outside. Steve Morton, the offensive coordinator, along with... Kenny Margram, the co-offensive coordinators, and Marcus Arroyo, actually, quarterback's coach, calling a lot of the plays as well. Third and six to Frellis. Again, high, pulled down by Jones for a first down. Out on the San Jose State 37-yard line, he beat Marcus McCauley there. He had to go up high to pull that one down. Nice grab by Jones. To Frellis, you see, not a true drop-back passer, not as accurate when he has to be in the pocket. He overstrides a little bit on this one, ends up throwing that ball high. But it's enough to get it done and get that first down and move the sticks. You mentioned Marcus Arroyo, just a young guy, 26 years of age. He's only three years older than Tefratis himself, quarterback coach, and he does a share in the play calling, as you mentioned, along with Mortonet. First and 10 to Frattis. Going to loop one down the side for Jones. Oh, broken up by McCauley that time. That ball hit Jones's hands, and McCauley was able to knock it away. Jones should have caught that ball. He was a receiver. He was in position. Ball hit both hands. He should have pulled that ball in. Perfect strike by Tefralis to put that where he is. The one thing he does well is throw the deep ball. You see, right over the outside shoulder, he should have pulled that ball in. And there is Arroyo, as they called the deep ball there against McCauley, who has been beaten several times on uh, deep balls this year, including a, a game-tying touchdown he gave up last week at the end of the game against Louisiana Tech. And Utah State also used him on the outside throwing the deep ball. Second and 10 for Tefratis, 14-0 San Jose State. Fresno blitzes, quick throw out to Chester Coleman. And he is pushed down, and the tackler, Vincent Mays, lost his lid when he made the tackle. Knocked out Chester Coleman, the wide receiver, short gain. He didn't need his hat to make that play. Well, it was all chest and hands at that point. Those guys were just wrapped up and dancing out there, and Mays showed great leg drive, pushing him out of bounds. The offensive player gets away for that, with that kind of thing, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, you're allowed to face mask on offense. <laughs> now, why is that? It's a straight yes. arm. You're trying to keep these, these ruffian defensive guys from hurting you. You know defensive guys are mean, Greg. Third down and nine. Out of the shotgun they go again. 14-0 San Jose State here late in the opening quarter. An empty set. Three receivers go right, two go left. Defratis pressure. Rolling right. Little high and dropped by Jacob French. He would have had the first down there. Got a little bit high on the throw by Defratis. And for the first time today, San Jose State must bring in their great punter, Waylon Prather. Coach Tomey said that Prather is having the best year of any punter that he has ever been around. That's a pretty big statement by a coach who's been coaching for a long time. Coach Those are pretty like, good numbers, though. Yeah, pretty good. 43.8 average. Just striking the ball very well right now. Joe Fernandez back to return the punt. Prather's 43.8, the best in the WAC, the 14th in the country. Angles this one away from Fernandez. Look at this punt inside the 10-yard line. A brilliant punt there by Waylon Frather, the junior. 52 yards and out of bounds. Exactly what he's been doing all year. He hit one against Idaho, went out of bounds at the one-yard line, ended up pinning him down there. San Jose State got an interception, ended up with the ball in the eight. So the kicking game is a huge part of Dick Tomey's package. No matter where he's been, it's defense, discipline, and the kicking game. He coaches the heck out of it, and they've been doing a great job on that punt team this year. Well, that's a good matchup because Pat Hill obviously prides uh, his Bulldogs in good special teams play, and they've been remarkable blocking kicks and overall on teams for the last 10 years. Well, they start at the 9-yard line. Last time they had the ball, they started on the 5. 
yard line. They'll try to foul her out as they give the ball to Anthony Harding again. So Wright took the last few carries off on the last series. And Harding starts this series, and now he will yield. Harding been getting a lot more playing time at that tailback position. He's kind of their single back guy. They get him back there, run him in that open set. But they like him carrying the ball. Just a young player back there. Obviously, Dwayne Wright, the established starter. But Harding is a good changeup for him. Tom Brandstater. And a second down. Right back into the game. Gets wide. Lorenz able to slow him down a bit, but he ran right over that tackle and picked up a couple of extra yards. And he's a big back. In fact, he ran right over Owens for a first down. 6'1", 220 pounds. We talk about the lack of uh, breakaway speed, Mike, due to the loss of uh, the quickness with the knee injury. But, boy, he really runs with power. Yeah, and you got 6'1", 220 against 5'9", 161 right there. I would say 220 is going to win that most of the time. Owen says, hey, just let me cover people. Don't make me tap a big man. First and 10 for Fresno State here late in the opening quarter. Start to showing blitz with Demetrius Jones. Brandstater rolling out to his right. He'll throw. It's and then followed up and incomplete. It was Jason Crawley, the freshman, who had his hands on the ball but could not bring it in. See Brandstater just rolling to his right. Wide open receiver there in Crawley, but Crawley just could not hold on to it. Perfect pass by Brandstater right where it's got to be. Crawley was slipping a little bit as that ball hit his hands, but he's still got to make that catch. Well, we mentioned the injury to, to Paul Williams, and it's been all year. First a high ankle sprain, and later he had a knee. Now he has torn ligaments in his wrist. They just miss Paul Williams, who wears number one and is the number one target in their passing game. Wright finds a crack, runs through it, first down, and all the way up to the Fresno State 37-yard line goes Dwayne Wright, a 16-yard run. Well, Dwayne Wright's going to have to be the guy for Fresno State. He's He's been their star tailback. He's going to have to carry this team on offense today. But he hits it hard downhill. You see him just straight ahead and then makes his move in that second level. Once he gets to the linebacker level and just starts dragging blue shirts down the field with him. Good skills. And for a big man at 220, cuts nicely. He doesn't make the lateral side-to-side -side stuff, but he makes a nice slash when he runs. Wayne Wright has already announced he is going to forego his senior year. He has a couple of kids, and he is going to be drafted, they think, in the first day of the NFL draft in rounds one, two, or three. Uh, he's not, it was mentioned before, the lack of breakaway speed, but he's got good hands. He picks up the blitz well, a good blocker. And yeah. he's going to the NFL, he's already said. An outstanding blocker back there as a tailback. He, he does run the ball, obviously, extremely well. Pat Hill said he's got a real upside left in terms of speed. Right now, he's probably a 4-7 guy in that range, but he's still recovering. Remember, he was rehabbing all last year. He's recovering from that knee injury, and with training and flexibility, his speed will increase. Second and seven. Randstater blitzed by Venner. Quick throw over the middle. It is caught by Miller the back. And he runs out for a Fresno State first down. Costello on the tackle of Lonier Miller. As Randstater got that away, Mike, he was under siege by the blitzing safety Vetter. Well, a great time to call the screen is versus the blitz if you can block the man who's supposed to take your screen man. The problem is if you're a quarterback, you're going to take a shot if you're throwing it against the blitz because those guys are coming unblocked. So Brandstater paid for it, but Fresno State got a nice gain out of it. Well, after the first three and a half minutes of the game, when they scored two touchdowns, San Jose State, Fresno State has been the better team. They've had a couple of nice drives starting from inside their 10-yard line. There's Miller again, breaking tackles, breaking into the secondary and picking up a first down to the San Jose State 40-yard line. Well, to yeah. pick up on what you're saying, Greg, you know, San Jose State really was two huge plays. They had the big post to start it off to Broussard, and then they came back with the big interception, which led to that touchdown. Fresno State's offense was only on the field for one snap at that point. Right now, they're starting to get something going with that running game that Pat Hill loves so much. Remember, this guy is an offensive line coach by nature. He is going to run the football at you. The, the game is won up front by the big bodies, and he thinks he's got a group, although it's patchwork right now, that's more physical up front. There's the handoff to Miller again. They give the right a couple of plays off again. These uh, young backs they have behind Dwayne Wright are certainly going to be good players for Fresno State. They're both true freshmen. 
Anthony Harding and now Lonier Miller on a Fantana High School on the uh, tackle there is Rhino Gonzalez for San Jose State, but uh, they found the rhythm early here in San Jose. Two touchdowns, three and a half minutes into it. They lead 14-0 after one quarter. Tomorrow here on Comcast Sportsnet, scoring leader Vicente Figueroa takes the California Cougars into an MISL clash with Detroit. Don't miss the fast-paced, high-scoring action of the major indoor soccer league. That's tomorrow at 1.30, California versus Detroit. The ignition, I do believe, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. You know Vicente Figueroa, Mike, don't you? Absolutely. Getting it done out there. Leading score last year for him. Second and five, first play of the second quarter. End around to Chaston West. He has room to run. Nice tackle by Vetter. And he's got the Fresno State first down inside the 25-yard line. Chaston West, who runs back their kickoffs, and they're a big play guy. They give him the ball whenever they can, and quite often on end to rounds. Here's his 10th carry of the year. Well, he's really had to step up with Phillips down, but Chaston West, he can do it all. Former quarterback now running the ball hard at that receiver position. A young talent again, one of those young freshmen for Fresno State. There's Fresno State again on the move. As they have uh, driven twice from inside their 10-yard line, right back into the game. Demage Jones came slanting down from his rover back position, the outside linebacker slot to hit him behind the line, right able to fumble forward for a couple of more yards. Right now with 50 yards on the day and nine carries. He had 295 in their last game last Friday night against Louisiana Tech. So Gilbert and the Spartans have to dig in it uh, defensively. The uh, sophomore from Chino Hills. And he was called out this year. Dick Tomey said he was not playing uh, well enough to start the year. And he said to pick up his game a little bit. Second and eight. And a short run there is made. And John Tutu on the catch and run there for Fresno State, Mike, as they slipped him a quick one into Masha Jones there on the tackle. Nice tackle by Jones out there to hold on. Azira Tutu had that ball, had a good head of steam upfield, had made a nice first move, but Demaja Jones just held on to that jersey long enough to let the rest of the blue shirt swarm. J.E. Ajaya Tutu, who's uh, another one of these youngsters, a redshirt freshman they've had to use quite a bit of with the injury to Paul Williams. Third down and eight coming up for the Bulldogs. West goes in motion. Grand standard with time over the middle, caught by West. And it's very close to a first down at around the 12-yard line. And you know what you're seeing now? That offensive line for Fresno State reestablishing that yard marker every time, reestablishing that line of scrimmage in the running game and now it's opening it up for Grand State, slowing down that defensive line for San Jose State, getting them to think about run first, giving Grand State time back there as a quarterback to operate. West able to run for the first down for Pat Hill. You know, it's first and 10 for Fresno State on the San Jose State 11-yard line. Just underway here in the second quarter. Fresno State down a couple of touchdowns, needs to get in the end zone here. Grand Stater. Breaks a tackle, and he'll take it in the end zone for a touchdown. Broke the tackle right on the line. Boy, he's tough to break down on the first hit, and he got outside wide, and they're here from the Central Valley to see their Bulldogs get their first touchdown of the game. Well, and they especially like to see this. San Jose State stacked the box. They had eight guys inside that time. And like I was saying before, that offensive line just reestablishing the line of scrimmage. Every time you get a couple of yards surge, it allows that back room to work and right, able to find a seam and get to the outside. With eight men inside and the San Jose State playing man on the outside, once he got to that second level, there was nobody around to make a tackle. That's his 11th rushing touchdown of the year and number 12 overall. Stintzer, the point after for the Bulldogs, and they have cut the lead in half now. It's a 91-yard drive in 13 plays. Here's play number 13, right? Runs into his own guy and off the pack for an 11-yard touchdown. Alongside Mike Pulaski, joined by Scott Marsh down on the field, Greg Papa back here in San Jose. Very impressive 91-yard drive by the Bulldogs to cut the lead in half. Here's Clint Stitzter. 
The junior kicker to kick away. Gidry and French are back deep for San Jose State. There is Al Gidry. He was suspended early in the year, getting some playing time here uh, late in the year. He was one of their top rushers last year until Giannis Davis took over the final five games of the season. Stitzer kicks away. It'll go towards the end zone for a touchback as we check in with Scott downstairs. All right, Greg, thank you. Dwayne Wright, who just scored that touchdown, obviously coming back off that knee injury, looking good on the field. But in a lot of ways, the knee injury helped him grow up as a person, too. When he suffered that injury, according to the coaching staff and some of the other players within the administration, Wright, not the most mature of people and not the most mature in terms of the classroom, really wasn't taking it that seriously. After the knee injury, he realized he might have a life without football and a family to go with it. It got him to get serious about his studies he'll be graduating in December and obviously he's doing a great job on the field as well back up to you Greg yeah we'll all remember obviously 9-11 of 2001 as will uh, Mr. Dwayne Wright but he also remembers 9-11 of 2004 mm -hmm. the day that he suffered that terrible knee injury here's Davis stylistically Mike a very different running back than to Dwayne Wright who's more of a power downhill guy Giannis Davis very shifty and tremendous breakaway speed yeah he gives up 40 pounds and six inches as well but a nice job here. He hits the hole downhill. He sees it wash across his face, pauses long enough to let it clear, and then he bursts through the hole. He's got a real quick first three steps, so he can get through holes like that. Davis doing a nice job of allowing that player to develop in front of him. And he's a little guy, 5'7", 180 pounds. Grew up idolizing Barry Sanders and Emmett Smith. There's the flip to him, the reverse coming to Jones. He's going to throw for Broussard, who's covered into double Vincent Mays. Clever play as Jones threw into double coverage. He was going to run that play no matter if he was open or not. And Broussard almost came down with it. Jones was throwing that ball all the way, threw it absolutely on a rope. Showed a great arm for a receiver, actually. You see just the pitch in the reverse. You can see right here the way he's holding the ball. You know he's going to throw it. And if he catches this, it's a great catch by Broussard. The fact that he dropped it, I'm going to say he should have caught it. Well, he like had it, and then it was poked away there by Mays. Sounds like a quarterback, doesn't it? These right. guys should make every catch. They got to earn their scholarship. I don't know if he dropped it or I it think was it got punched knocked out. out. It was punched out. Second and ten. Jafrat is hit as he throws, and the ball lands incomplete. He was going to Jones on a short drop, and he got blown up, got pressure from Tyler Klutz right up the middle and almost uh, threw a pick. Well, and you mentioned early on, Klutz, the most consistent guy on that defensive line for Fresno State. But there you see two Fresno State players actually getting their hands on it. Vincent Mays was there for one. Anthony Hart, not Harding, excuse me, but Damon Jenkins. A bunch of double numbers on this team. The most in the NC2A for Fresno State. But Broussard almost had another big post out there at that receiver position. Let's see if they can uh, convert here on third down. San Jose State has not done much since the first three and a half minutes of the game. Again, they go into the empty set. Five on the line. This is Cameron Island, the freshman motioning in the backfield. They run the option to Fratis. will run for the first down and more. Finally pushed out on the Bulldog 40-yard line. A 27-yard run by Adam to Fratis. And really not his strength, not the niftiest guy, which makes that such a good play call. You don't think he's going to come at you a ton on the option or keep the ball on the option, but he did a nice job of reading the blocks in front of him. You see just a nice hole opening up for him. Showed a little burst there getting through, Not didn't he? Not bad. Not bad. And he's powerful, 6'2", 215 pounds. In uh, high school, he was a track and field star, and he threw the shot put and also threw the discus. You think more offensive linemen. James Jones now lines up as a quarterback. Here's Jones throwing deep for Coleman. James Jones wants to go back to his Gunderson high days here. He wants to play quarterback. He's doing it all today. His second pass attempt on the day, one on that reverse we just saw, and then coming back straight from the quarterback position. You know, if he's going to play, he's got to take those gloves off, though. He's got those receiver's gloves on there. You don't get the same touch without those gloves. I bet he throws a nice spiral and completes that pass. Well, Tom Brady plays, uh, throws pretty well wearing gloves. Yeah, but Tom Brady practices that position every day. <laughs> I think Jones might still, might. He seems like he, uh, he slips under center a little bit in practice. Second and 10, they go into an eye. And it's the handoff to Callier on the quick hitter, and he runs for a first down. All the way down to 
the Fresno State 23 yard line goes James T. Kelly who scored the touchdown on the catch earlier. 17 yards right up the gut. A big difference between how Fresno State was getting it done with that offensive line and how San Jose State's getting it done. Fresno State was reestablishing the line of scrimmage. They're pushing guys off the ball, moving them downfield. But San Jose State is kind of in a stalemate, but what they're doing is opening big holes inside. They're washing guys along. They're not trying to push them downfield, but doing a great job of opening those holes for Callier and for Davis. Cameron Island is in the toss, and he's going to have to get around Marlon Briscoe to uh, get back to the line of scrimmage. He did outrun Briscoe, but Marcus McCauley was there to make the tackle, number 17. Now we've talked about a couple of times, a very curious senior year, and I think a lot of uh, Fresno State's woes from last year. Remember last year, they scored 42 points against USC at the Coliseum, were beaten 50 to 42. And a lot of the guys who were juniors last year, they expected to have big years this year as seniors, case in point being McCauley, uh, have not had big years. First flag of the day. On the offense. That penalty will be declined. We got to get Frank White, our referee, his microphone working. That's the first flag of the day that's been thrown for either on either team. Incredible. And they decline it. Looking on the illegal formation, they need another guy on the right side of that line to cover up that guard. They went unbalanced, but they didn't have the extra man over there to cover him up. Tight end needs to be on that side in a down position. A no loss of two. A flag comes in before they snap the ball again. So he had no penalties at all in the game's first 20 minutes. Fire the snap, false start. Offense, number 81. Five yard penalty. And now we've got two penalties on one snap. They didn't even get the snap off and John Broussard is called for the false start. So now it is second down and 17 for Tommy and the Spartans. Well, both of these coaches, both Coach Tommy and Coach Hill, preach discipline on their teams. That includes penalties, that includes the turnover takeaway battle, that includes the kicking game. They coached together down at Arizona in 90 and 91. Pat Hill, his team great this year in that turnover takeaway department, but they really want discipline from their squads. Catch by Chester Coleman, and he gets back just beyond the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and eight or nine coming up for San Jose State. They've already moved into field goal range for Strubeck. And go to Chester Coleman quite a bit today. He also a senior, a very experienced wide receiving core compared to Fresno State who was doing it with a, a lot of underclassmen and freshmen along with Joe Fernandez. So third and seven. San Jose State has converted on four of uh, five previous third downs today. Brown is taking a long time at the line here. This one will get whistled down again. Delay of game. Delay of game called on San Jose State. That was strange. Well, Tafralis couldn't figure out what he was looking at there. He's trying to figure out the defense, where the pressure was coming from. You see Coach Tommy tell him, come on, let's go. Move it forward. Manage the position. As a quarterback, you have to know what you're seeing and react. That's part of the position. And if they fail here, that'll make the uh, field goal a little more challenging for Strubeck. Right now, it'd be about 43 yards away and now it's third and 12 they've had three penalties the last four snaps after none in the first quarter and five minutes option and here's the pitch and it'll be tackled shy of the first down that's Patrick Perry who slips in for Giannis Davis here a little more of a downhill type runner for San Jose State tackled by the middle linebacker Dwayne Andrews so they'll bring in Strubeck and try the field goal Strubeck's been very good for him this year as a kicker very solid player all year long. But San Jose State really taking themselves out of it on that drive. You know, it's the three penalties in a row. And now having a substitution problem out there. Cantu comes in very late on the line. They're totally disorganized here the last couple of uh, minutes. Strubeck, 8 of 11 this year. He was 11 of 18 last year as a true freshman. 35-yard attempt. And they're going to pitch it to Strubeck. And he's going to throw it. And a little bit low and incomplete. So they went for a trick play on fourth down. Waylon Prather, the holder, the punter, flipped the ball to Strubeck, who was trying to get it to the other Callier, James Callier, the younger brother. And Strubeck a little bit light there. 
Well, kickers not known for being able to throw on the run like that. As a quarterback, it's hard enough, but a kicker who doesn't practice it all the time makes it even tougher. Must be a, a accounting major on the scoreboard here at Spartan Stadium. They gave him the three points anyway. I think that's the score of the fans <laughs> who are watching on their Xbox at home watching it, this game. It would have been had they gone for the field goal, but they flip it to Strubeck. And very close to crossing the line of scrimmage. And then a little light on the throw to Callier. So they were going to make it 17 to 7. I think that's what they meant. The score is 14 to 7. Brand Stater, quick throw out to the back. Anthony Harding. You know, college is all about theory, Greg. It's philosophy. In theory, that field goal would have been good had he kicked it. So exactly. they decided to give it to him. I'm thinking along with him. Look at the time of possession here. Mike, you take away the first three and a half minutes of this game. Fresno State has been the better team. But in the first three and a half minutes, San Jose State, first play from scrimmage, 86-yard touchdown pass to Broussard. First play for Fresno State, the interception shortly after that. A touchdown throw to Callier. And Fresno State is uh, looking strong as they come back. You know, oftentimes, time of possession is a good indicator in terms of who's winning and, and who's really playing better on the field. But in the end, it's what's on the scoreboard. San Jose State with the quick strikes being able to take advantage of it early in this game and has forced Fresno State to struggle a little bit. Third down and two coming up as Justin Cole and the Spartans dig in. Big crowd here at Spartan Stadium. They had almost 30,000 when Stanford was here for week two, and they expect to get well over 20 today. Third down. Here's Wright hit behind the line and dropped. Freddie McCutcheon. The defensive tackle shot in to make the play. Well, Freddie McCutcheon in there. Demetrius Jones playing that linebacker position on a nice run blitz. Came in and blew up the hole. Got out in front of that play. Good job. Good defensive play calling there to shut Fresno State down. One thing, if you're going to run trick plays, you have to be able to come back and play defense. And San Jose State got it done. Kyle Zimmerman in a punt for the second time. His first punt traveled just 29 yards. The dangerous do-it-all James Jones set to return for San Jose State, averaging over 11 yards a punt return. Fresno State had to rush the 11th guy back on the field here late before the punt. And it's a low one. And it'll take a couple of Fresno State bounces. Almost hit a Spartan. And it will be down at around the 34-yard line. Domingo Holmes was very close to having that ball inadvertently hit him, but it did not. There are a couple blue shirts around the ball. Those guys have to get away from it. You know, that punt team, one of the real thorns in Coach Hill's side all year long for Fresno State, only averaging 37 yards net on their punt team. For a guy who really focuses on the kicking game, that's been a weak spot for him on special teams. Final home game of the year here in San Jose. And they have played seven home games this year. They mostly have been played in a single year since 1949. They've gone five and one here at Spartan Stadium. The one loss to Boise State, the undefeated Boise State. And that was a heck of a game right to the very end. Right down to the very end. Spartans played them as tough as anybody played them all year long. San Jose State doing a great job at home this year. And opposite that, Fresno State got their first road win of the year last week versus La Tech, but they have not been very good on the road this year. We'll have a timeout called here as we take a look at the uh, Western Athletic Conference standings. Boise State, of course, undefeated and currently ranked ninth in the nation. Hawaii having a tremendous year under June Jones with their run and shoot. Offense at seven and one and this game is significant in the fact that although their records are inverted on the year Fresno State plays a very difficult out of conference schedule Mike and they have the same record as San Jose State so if the Bulldogs would win this game they would move into a third place tie in the WAC with Nevada at five and three right in the WAC but again their out of conference schedule is really their undoing this year playing LSU and Washington having a tough time out of conference. That man believes in taking on the top competition around the nation and proving yourself on that level. You know, his, his thought is, how can you be a top caliber team, top 20 team every year without playing top 20 teams? So one of the toughest non-BCS BCS, uh, schedules with Fresno State. But here you see that ball very close to one San Jose State player. 
And then a second and now almost hit bounce. home. Very lucky bounce. Almost hit Cameron Island, the running back, number 39, and then almost hit Domingo Holmes. As uh, Pat Hill, we heard the report from Scott where the Bulldogs have taken all the uh, Bulldog decals off of their helmets. And Coach Hill also is not coaching with a hat anymore. So that's the version of his uh, decal. Scott, do you have any idea what the stoppage of play? What are the what are the officials looking at here? Greg, they're checking to see if indeed a Spartan player did touch the football. That's the ruling. They've been called over by the officials up top. It's interesting. We're at the 20-yard line on the Spartan side, and they've got the phone. It's not quite the uh, red yep. hotline, but it's the gray labeled WAC West phone up above, and they're checking to see if indeed a Spartan player did touch the ball. Fresno will be charged with timeout. So there's well, that, a challenge, that was a challenge from Hill. Fresno. That was not done by the officials, but Pat Hill uh, asked for that challenge himself. Well, and that's a big momentum swinger. If it does happen, you know, up here in the booth, we were questioning it, so tough to see. But clearly the replay showed that it did not touch a Spartan. Well, I, I don't think we ever thought that it actually touched one. It came very, very close, close to touching one, but I think it was quite clear it did not uh, touch either Island or Holmes. But in any event, they thought it was worth a challenge. The Spartans will keep the ball first and 10 on their own 35-yard line. 6.18 to play in the first half. San Jose State trying to beat Fresno State, their most bitter conference rival for the first time in 16 years. They have lost to them 12 straight matchups. For a while, though, they were not in the same conference. Blow out. And that ball deflected up, intercepted by Goodwin. He's running back the other way for a touchdown. The ball hit Patrick Perry in the hands. It was deflected up in the air by McCauley and Allen Goodwin. The outside linebacker plucked it out of the air. He runs back 40 yards for a Fresno State tying touchdown. I believe that's actually a catch and then a fumble. I thought Patrick Perry had good control over that football, and then it got knocked out when he turned around. But Goodwin in perfect position to make the play. You see just a quick flat route to the left side for Tefralis, and Perry clearly has oh, it. Oh, yeah, he's got it. And McCauley, McCauley did up. a nice job stripping that ball, punching it out. And those are the big plays you have to make in big games if you want to compete. Nice play by Alan Goodwin. The ball just popped up in the air and he was able to pluck it. But it was McCauley who made the real big play. And we talked about McCauley, the embattled senior, playing his final game as a Fresno State Bulldog today. And on his way to the National Football League. We're going to hear more from uh, referee. Frank White. Unsportsmanlike conduct on a, a team scoring the touchdown. The play will be enforced on the kickoff. Number 10, number 40. Too much celebration there for the Bulldogs. Nate uh, Adams was involved, although they have two uh, 40s. It may have been Adams or Brandon Gridiron. And I had to get him to the broadcast at some point today, Mike, whether he was involved. A guy named that's, Gridiron. Yeah, that's a football name if ever there was we one. We love that. Talked about it. He should have been a Zeke or a Bronco. How or... do his parents name him Brandon? In any event, here's the PAT. And uh, Stitzer puts it through. He's only missed two point afters, but here's the play again. And you're right, Mike. It was caught by Patrick Ferry here. He had possession of the throw. No pick thrown by Tefralis. McCauley with a great strip. And Goodwin picks it out of the air and runs for a touchdown. Well, big play from uh, Fresno State side. San Jose State's already had a couple of huge plays, and they get one on defense. Allen Goodwin with the fumble recovery and the run back for a score. So San Jose State has lost their 14-0 lead here on the first Saturday in December. Temperature in the uh, low 60s in the South Bay. Stitzer will kick off again. 4.0 GPA for Clint Stitzer, the junior, one of 10 at Athletes nationally with a perfect rate point average. He's going to kick off from his 20-yard line following the unsportsmanlike for the excessive celebration. Jacob French from the 20 across the 30 and then dropped it around the 37-yard line by Elgin Simmons, the defensive back. San Jose State get off to a great start. First play of the game, 86-yard touchdown pass from Tefrellis to John Broussard. Then Owens the interception on the first play from Fresno State, and they cash that in quickly. But since that point, Tefrellis and the Spartans have 
have stumbled a bit in a curious call, I thought, to assure the uh, field goal attempt by Strubeck and go for the uh, the throw by Strubeck on fourth down. Yeah, Dick Tomey obviously striking for the heart, but anytime you go for a play like that, if you make it, you're a genius, and if you miss it, it's a bad call. So that's the way it works. So we say bad call, it didn't work. Here's the handoff to Callier, and they don't get much on first down. Ryan McKinley, backup linebacker, on the tackle for Pat Hill and the Fresno State Bulldogs. Remember, they won their first game, uh, beat Nevada 28-19. They proceeded to lose a school record seven in a row. We're one and seven at one point, Mike, but they come here playing well. They have won their last three games. Well, and that's a sign of good coaching, too. It is tough to pull a team out of a downward spiral like that. Seven in a row is a tough string of losses, but Pat Hill actually doing a nice job of pulling them back. Second and 11, there's Broussard. Slips a tackle, and he's very close to a first down and may have it in midfield. He picks up 13 on the second and 11. Goodwin, the touchdown scorer, was the ultimate tackler there, but Broussard makes a nice play. So Fresno State got the touchdown run by right here as he gets off the pack, 11-yard scoop, and then just moments ago, a momentum changer, great play by McCauley, Mike, and that ties the game at two touchdowns apiece. Well, two big defensive plays, one for each school, really play a big part in this game so far. One an interception, one a fumble return for a touchdown. A fake pitch to Callier, to Frellis, and a throw deep down the sideline for French, but out of bounds. Just drifted with that ball. French actually covered on that play. Damon Jenkins right there in coverage, so good job by Adam to Frawless. Throw it away, come back and get it on the next down. You don't have to get every down, you just have to get enough to get that 10 yards to move the sticks. Second and 10 coming up for Adam to Frellis, the junior quarterback from Mills High School in Millbrae. Hiya uh, Lane uh, put some pressure on the quarterback. Mike mentioned the 27 quarterback sacks they have this year, the Bulldogs. Lane has a, a sack and a half coming into the game. Good throw to Coleman. And a loose coverage there by the cornerback. Damon Jenkins, so they gave it to him quickly to Coleman for a pickup of about five. So now it's third and five. Much easier to convert third and five than third and ten. And so San Jose State trying to just move the ball in increments, small chunks right now. As long as you can continue to pick up four or five yards each down, it makes play calling so much easier for you on the sideline. To Frellis, hitting on 66% of his passes all year after 45% his freshman year, just 50% last year his sophomore year. Now it's third and five. They stay converting on 42% of their third downs all year. Quick pitch to Perry. Breaks a tackle, and he's going to be shy of the first down by about a yard. Fourth down and a yard coming up for Tomey and the Spartans. Very nice job of swarming to the ball by that Fresno State defense. Perry actually had a seam. Perry was actually the big hero against Idaho last week Giannis Davis ineffective in the first half of that game with only nine yards rushing Perry came in that second half scored three touchdowns they're going for it Mike they're going to bring in uh, Jeff Clark and Nick Marchini the tight end they're also going to bring in number 71 who we've seen him line up in the offensive backfield a couple of times today and it's hard to miss him Jabri Sharp comes in he's a lineman they play in the backfield a timeout will be called here but told me the Spartans are going to go for it now, what they're saying is fourth and two, but really it's a fourth and a very long yard coming up. But Sharp, look at him. He, he doesn't look like a fullback, does he? He's actually an offensive guard out there. Well, he's got number 71, Mike. But he's playing that fullback position, the big lead blocker. All right, San Jose State, we mentioned they're going to their first bowl game in 16 years, and the first time they're going to play a bowl game out of the state of California. So make your plans to be in Albuquerque two days before Christmas. Get your tickets. They'll go on sale on Monday, 1-408-924-SJTX, or get online at sjsuspartans.com. The San Jose State Spartans have not been to a bowl game. Since 1990, when they played at Bulldog Stadium in Fresno in the California Raisin Bowl. Of course, the Bulldogs want their 13th straight win over San Jose State. They've beaten them 12 straight times. It's just good that there's a rivalry again. For those of us that remember the uh, Jim Sweeney, 
Claude, Claude Gilbert. Gilbert. Great battles of the 80s and the, the towel waving on each sideline. Sweeney waving his towel and Gilbert coming back. And both teams getting after it. All right, they're going forward here on fourth down. He's just going to do a hard count, try to get him off sides of that hard count. They're not going to snap it on fourth and a long one. Yep, yeah, I think you're right. Now back away. They're not backing away fully. Are they going to run the ball here? No. And they try to get Fresno State to jump off sides. They did not go for it. So Tommy called a timeout before he, he did this. And now apparently he's going to elect to punt the ball, although he's not bringing his punt team on out. The offense, number seven. Delay a game. They called a delay a game on that? Well, safe play. You know you've got a good punter and Prather out there. If you can get a cheap one, get the free one, you might as well take it. If not, let your guy kick it away and try to pin Fresno State. Just under four minutes left in the game here. Defense had a nice series last time they were on the field. So good coaching call. You know, you might as well take your shot at it. San Jose State has one timeout remaining. Rayford trying to push it inside the 20. And a roll pass for Nandez. Did they down it? No, his foot hit the line. That should be a touchback. It is going to be a touchback. Are they going to say the one-yard line? Well, the ball never made it into the end zone. But the foot the of the players, player did. All the players did, but the ball never made it in. Meanwhile, there's a penalty back on the other side here. Hold on a moment. Marlon Briscoe of Fresno State. Right at the punter. Well, they got penalties that... Uh, any, any type of roughing. Let's see. Frank White, what do you got? Running into the kicker. So that's only five. Defense. Five-yard penalty. That penalty will be declined. They will take the results of the play first down. Yeah, it's only five yards. Remember, they took the delay of game penalty, and they lost five, so it was fourth and six. Well, I can't believe they're going to give them the ball on the one-yard line here. I thought the San Jose State gunner clearly touched the, the end line or actually was into the end zone. But right now, they're putting it up against inside the one-yard line, right up against the end zone. He did. I believe he batted that ball out before he ended up in the end zone. Then it was touched by a Spartan before. It's John Broussard, Mike. See, he batted receiver. it out before he hit. No, no, he didn't. No, no. He didn't. no his foot How about was in challenging the end zone. that? And that's, that's 19 yards. And they do have two timeouts left. So if it's not a, a booth review, which will probably will be now, in college football, it's different. They are going to call Frank White over, and he'll yeah. take a look at this. This will be changed, and they will put the ball on the 20-yard line. He's going to get over there and dial that rotary phone. One Commissioner more time. Gordon, <laughs> didn't, didn't Scott refer to it as the uh, bat phone earlier? Where's Alfred? In any event, this will be changed. As clearly John Broussard, the wide receiver, getting down here, he will touch the ball, then he will slip right there and simultaneously touch and the ball on uh, his foot on the line, so they will uh, move the ball out to the 20-yard uh, the line. Yep. Clearly across the goal line with that Although right San foot. Jose State could take the penalty on the uh, running in right. the kicker will, and then re-kick. Well, that's the thing. If, if they call it a touchback, then San Jose State will take the penalty. Right, and re-kick and avoid the touchback. After review... It's indisputable visible to Indians that the, it was a touchback. Therefore, San Jose can take the penalty five yards and re-kick. Is Indians the same as evidence? It's cold. Indisputable. Get him some coffee. How about clear? Beyond well, a was, shadow of a doubt. He was in doubt. the shade. <laughs> Irrefutable. We know what he meant. But they'll kick it again. Which brings up, you know, it was fourth and two. They went back five yards, and now they go back forward five yards. Pat Hill. Well, he wants to get the touchback and not let him take the penalty is what he's looking for. But, but no, if they review that, yeah. then San Jose gets to take that penalty. Well, Prather should come back out and punt the ball again. Maybe they're going to go for it. It's fourth down. They have down. that offensive series it's in there. It's fourth the down and two. They've got to be ready. Go they're going for it. They're going for it. I like this call by Dick Tomey. He's just... Fresno State ready for this? They have their base personnel defensively on the field as they bring in Sharp again. Jabris Sharp, the 330-pound lineman who will play as a lead blocker in the backfield. You might see him try to hard count him again. They're going to do that again? Patrick Perry, more of a downhill runner. They're going to go for it. They're going to play action. Tefralis is throwing deep. He's got Jones out there. And it is caught for a touchdown. 
Chain of events for Dick Tomey's side. Here's the PAT by Strubeck uh, to give San Jose State back the lead and a real momentum swing here late in the first half. Damn Remember, it. it was fourth and two before. He tried to hard count him, did not snap the ball after a timeout, punted on fourth and seven, and now on fourth and two, they go for it, Mike, and they go for the whole thing. And Damon Jenkins had his arm in there, so James Jones caught the ball and the DB and dragged everything into the end zone. A great individual play by James Jones. And you look, San Jose State put Jabri Sharp in there, their big running back, thinking, hey, we're going to dive straight ahead for it. They sold the play, got one-on-one -on -one coverage, and took full advantage of it. Well, another touchdown pass thrown by Tefrelis, and he spread it around now. James Jones, the senior, playing his last game here at Spartan Stadium, catches his eighth touchdown pass of the year. John Broussard got one earlier. Callier, the back, got one. And uh, by Pat Hill, what a in a span of just 30 seconds, his whole world was rocked. He thought he had a touchback on the ball on the 20-yard line, but a very interesting call there by Tomey. Uh, to go for it on fourth and two and go for the whole thing. Well, T Tommy actually really held all the cards in that whole procession. If it's not a touchback, the ball's in the one yard line. They take a great field position. If they do get the touchback, they've still got the penalty they can take for the running into the kicker. So they came back and went for it. Again, when we talked about it before, the fake field goal, when you miss it, oh, it's a horrible call by a coach. Going for the deep ball on fourth and short, what a great call, right? <laughs> That's the ebb and flow of being a head coach. So here's the kickoff by Strubeck. And he'll put it to Joe Fernandez at around the two-yard line. West out to block. Fernandez. He broke free, but not very far as he crosses the 20 and dropped on the 21-yard line. Adonis Davis, a defensive lineman on the tackle. Chris Reese, a linebacker, also on the tackle for San Jose State. And here's what Fresno State has done first play of the game interception then twice they began drives inside their 10 yard line and first time drove out effectively but punted the next time they went 91 yards and then they went for a punt there was a defensive touchdown uh, mixed in there and don't forget the import of the excessive celebration after goodwin's touchdown now that changed the field position right. battle here move field position for the spartans and ended up scoring a touchdown there in the end grand stater has his pass deflected there that, by jerron gilbert that was close to being defensive offsides one of the san jose state spartans was in the backfield before brand stater ever got the ball now gilbert got right into brand stater's face there on the rollout and tipped the ball away the sophomore defensive lineman very young defensive line as we've talked about second and ten for fresno state they do bring in Dwayne Wright. he's back in grant stater out of a shotgun inside handoff to right and he's dropped to the 23 yard line seven coming up for Fresno State. We saw that San Jose State defense holding the three and out on their last possession. The Spartans picking it right back up when they got on the field. This third down play will be big here for the remainder of the half. San Jose State has one timeout remaining. Fresno State has two left. Well, they've waited a long time here in the South Bay to beat the Bulldogs. 16 long years. They've waited. They go to a bowl game and also beat Fresno State. They've already made the bowl reservations for Albuquerque. Now they want the Bulldogs. Grant Stater. Yeah, right breaks one tackle, but not the second. And he has dropped well shy of the first down by Dwight Lowry. We've not talked about him much today, Mike, because they avoid him. Eight interceptions on the year, but a nice open field tackle there. Yeah, a guy like Lowry, you throw to the other side. You avoid him like the plague as a corner. 
So doing a nice job of coming up and showing that he can make an open field tackle as well against a big back. Well, it's amazing. After they scored the game-tying touchdown and the fumble, the momentum has swung back to San Jose State. San Jose State, State really, State really that score. took it back. You made the good point. The stupid penalty on the excessive celebration, then San Jose State just took momentum back. Zimmerman. This punt will go the other way, and Fresno State will touch it at about midfield. Zimmerman got the low wrong bounce there at midfield, so now San Jose State has already scored one touchdown to reclaim the lead, but they're in good position here to go up more. 144 to play in the first half, Mike, and they have one timeout left. Yeah, talk about momentum swing. If San Jose State can turn around, put some more points on the board going in, their last two drives, get a touchdown in that big turn of events that led to that last touchdown, and come back now and at least get a field goal, they go in pumped up at half, and they have been a very good second-half team this year. Dick Tomey letting it all hang out here as he uh, decided not to go for the field goal attempt by Strubeck and to uh, have the kicker throw forward on fourth down, and he went for it all on fourth and two and came up with a big touchdown. And he put Sharp in the backfield out of the shotgun and a quick throw out to Jones. And he's dropped on the Fresno State 46-yard line by the cornerback Damon Jenkins. And Tefralis actually checking to that play. He saw that he had Jones isoed up outside on Jenkins. Saw him tap the hip. He gave him that hitch-go option. When Jenkins backed off, Jones smartly sat down, ran the hitch. Giannis Davis healthy over on the sideline watching. Tefralis on the keeper on the option. And not much there. Third down coming up. Dwayne Edwards, the leading tackler for the Bulldogs, the middle linebacker. Came into the game with 79 tackles, seventh most in the WAC. Open the year with 11 tackle game and their win over Nevada, and he's kept it up all year. 50 seconds to go in the half. Well, with Stanford playing Cal, we felt obligated to uh, bring on a, a former Cardinal. They have a couple on the San Jose State sideline. And there's Ken Marjoram, the former offensive coordinator here at San Jose State, arguably the greatest wide receiver in Stanford history, and a NFL star with the Chicago Bears. And uh, he's now changed roles for Dick Tomey, not the offensive coordinator anymore, but the running back coach here. And Tomey said, you find your niche with all these guys, and you find out how they all work together. Last year, Kenny was coaching quarterbacks. This year, and, and he said in the offseason, you know, I thought maybe getting a guy that played the position would be a better move. So selflessly, said, let's bring in a guy, you see Marcus Arroyo there, to coach quarterbacks. Let me go back to coaching a position that I'm more comfortable with, coaching running backs and coaching wide receivers you know here's a guy that was selfless with this team but finding the niche with his staff coach Tomey told us this offseason they'll probably make some moves too and, and really fine-tune how the coaches work together impressive list of names on the ring of honor here at Spartan Stadium of course the great uh, Bill Walsh and Dick Vermeil honored Louis Wright, Steve DeBerg, list goes on and on. They also added Claude Gilbert to their ring of honor this year. Third down coming up for San Jose State. Third down and two. Patrick Perry in the backfield. Terfellis will keep and run for a first down and more. Gets down the sideline. Pushed out by McCauley on the 20-yard line. Another great run on the keeper there by Terfellis. 23 yards this time. And you know they were thinking at least get in position, run back towards the middle of the field for a field goal with a right-footed kicker. Instead, they run that same option we saw him have success on earlier, and he just keeps it himself and gets the extra yards. Who said he can't run? Wasn't me. I know that. <laughs> He's making moves off the outside. He nice job tackles. by the quarterback. He sheds tacklers. He runs pretty vertical, but he's a quarterback. He's supposed to. You and those quarterback lines. Three rushes, 52 yards for Tefralis. There's the handoff to Perry. And he high steps down to the 15-yard line. Well, you were here for our broadcast way back in week two when they uh, beat Stanford. The big play of the game was the James Jones run. And Tefralis made a pretty nice block getting yeah, downfield to help spring him for block. the game-winning touchdown run. And very much like that game, they tried to give the game against Stanford away, and Coach Tomey actually made a point about that. They threw an interception. They had a muff punt. They, they really let Stanford go up by a lot in that second quarter. Here, 
they allowed Fresno State back in the game with that big fumble for the touchdown, and their second quarter was very slow, but they're starting to show a resurgence here at the end of the second quarter. Now they've got a real chance to go for the end zone a couple times, and if not, at least come away with the field goal. Fresno State must play defensively minus a high shot lane who was out after making the tackle and the injury. Look at the injury his elbow in the last play. Alan Goodwin makes the tackle here on Patrick Perry. Ten seconds to go in the half. And Tafralis is trying to get up there and spike the ball. They have no more timeouts left. Four seconds, three, two, one. And he, get it. he did not get it inside. Center. Wow. On the 15-yard line, the half ends. The Spartans are not happy. Frank White, the referee, will come in. Dick Tomey walks right on the field and into their meeting, and we'll see if the Fresno State's running off the field and going back into their locker room smartly. We'll see if the Spartans will get one more play here. And they Absolutely. will not. Pacing or the center needed to get over that ball and snap it and get it so that they can spike the ball. Fresno did hold them up, but San Jose State had an opportunity to spike the ball. Even if you take the penalty, get it snapped, spike it, kill the clock. And the Bulldogs are in a race to get off the field, and uh, White has already closed out the proceedings here in the first half, and uh, we are going to talk to Dick Tomey coming up in just a bit. Scott Marsh is not going to be uh, in a real happy conversation with the coach. His team played well, and we love that fourth and two uh, uh, deep throw for the touchdown there before the end of the half, but he's going to be very agitated as he is still going off the field, uh, walking with Frank White, our referee, and Scott's there walking stride for stride to keep up with the coach who has not lost any of his feistiness at age 68. And what a year he has had revitalizing this program. Uh, he is uh, understandably, I think, a little bit hot at they, uh, first at his team for not getting the playoff and also with Frank White. Scott Marsh will try to calm him down as he chats with Dick. All right, Greg, thank you. Obviously, Coach, a tough ending to the first half. Obviously, you thought you had some time left on we the had clock. had time. I mean, the official wouldn't let him... I mean, let's not talk about it. Okay, we'll move on. Obviously, some big plays in the first half for your team. A lot of momentum for you guys with the big pass up top. Yeah. Uh, I'm not very conversational. I'm sorry. No problem. I'm Thank upset. you, Coach. Forget it. Thank you, Coach. Greg, we'll go back up to you. I tried, but you know how it is right now. Well, you know what happened? The umpire, Steve Colder, I think, as he was walking through, he actually interfered with the ball being snapped there. So it wasn't just a mechanical error on the Spartans in the center facing her, but the umpire walked right through as he was trying to snap the ball. That's the greatest interview I've ever heard, by the way, heading off at halftime. Most of the time, it's, yeah, we played well. Don't you love that? He showed absolute composure. He's so he was mad upset. he can't talk. Have you ever been to a restaurant and said to yourself, I'd like to make this at home? Well, you can. Half it was all San Jose State early. Fresno State came back to uh, tie the game, and then San Jose State, we thought had the momentum late in the first half of that wild play in the non snap uh, right up against halftime. I'm not sure who's feeling the momentum here at halftime. Greg Popper rejoined by Mike Pulowski. What a good first half we had. A oh, great first half of football. You saw the ebb and flow of college football rivalry game here. San Jose State kicks it off. I mean, tough with a big offensive play, huge defensive play to come back, and Fresno State starts asserting themselves. Two good teams physically matching up pretty tough. Two coaches that believe in discipline we're seeing it on the field. Yeah, good matchup to be sure. Two old-time antagonists and it's just good to have this rivalry uh, renewed here with San Jose State's football program uh, back on the upswing, but they ruled up 300 yards of uh, total offense and it came uh, initially right away. The first play from scrimmage to Fralis goes down the field deep for an 85-yard touchdown pass to John Broussard. Well, a whole lot easier to reach that 300-yard mark when you start off with 85 right out of the gate. The big scoring strike right off the kickoff return and then of course on defense they get the big interception Christopher Owens coming out tipping that ball to himself a nice little return but what it did is set up that offense for San Jose State James T. Callier catching a pass going head over heels into the end zone and all of a sudden San Jose State's on top 14 to nothing and Fresno State has to respond they come back Dwayne Wright he's been the workhorse all year long you give him the ball it was a nice drive for the Bulldogs there to get down to the end zone and then this, the fumble recovery for a touchdown. Alan Goodwin off the outside. I mean, just perfect opportunity right out there. The ball falls in his hands. you got to make that play. And then talk about your game-changing series here. There's a punt. It goes to the replay. 
it's ruled that this is a touchback. So Coach Tomey, in classic Dick Tomey fashion, decides to go for it all on the next play. This is fourth and one. He gets a Fralis back there, throwing deep for James Jones off the outside, and really a great individual effort by James Jones to make that play, to make the catch off the outside. As a receiver, you have to come up with that. The Fralis to Jones was a huge play there from momentum. And here are the final numbers, Mike. 307 yards of total offense for San Jose State, despite the fact they had the football for less than 13 minutes in Fresno State, 156 yards, and they had the ball uh, for over 17 minutes. Well, Scott tried to talk to Dick Tomey going off the field, but he was so enraged. Let's see if he can actually execute the interview here with Pat Hill. Scott? All right, Craig. Thank you here with Coach Hill. Obviously, an exciting first half a lot of controversy with some of the calls. This is a great game going into the second half. Yeah, we, we uh, put ourselves in a real hole early, and uh, both teams are playing hard, and then the end of the half was some interesting stuff. But, hey, we get the ball first the second half. You know, th th this game's up for grabs. So we're what's, gonna, your, what's your keys in the second half? Oh, uh, we got to run the football. we got to be able to run the football and, and try to establish field position. We've been inside our 10 most of the night starting position, so we got to get some field position. Coach, thanks for the time. All right, Greg, that went a little better. Back up to you. Right, nice job. Now, let's see if Tommy can come back out here and talk to us. We'll talk to Dick coming up after the game. Dwayne Wright had 62 yards rushing in that first half on 12 carries. And the other side, Giannis Davis only had 37 yards, but only five carries for Giannis. We'll see if San Jose State gets him more into the offensive attack when we start the third quarter. Let's go. To Fralis rushed for 53 yards in the first half. He was actually San Jose State's leading at rusher. Giannis Davis only five carries for 37 yards. To Fralis with three touchdown passes. Dick Tomey is still steaming. And I think rightfully so with Frank White, the referee. And I think Coach's point would be that the umpire, Steve Colder, I think he walked right past the center and kind of delayed San Jose State for a beat or two and forced him to spike the ball as time had already expired. That official is supposed to set the ball and get out of the way when they wind the clock. But again, Tefralis was also yelling at Pacinger, get over the ball, we got to snap it, got to get down. The quarterback almost always knows game position, time of clock, all those things and how to manage the game. Offensive linemen sometimes don't understand where you're at in the game. You need to get your center down because it didn't matter who was blocking who on that play. He was just going to spike the ball. So Tefralis needed to communicate that to Pacinger, get him over the ball and get that snap up. Davis will we'll see if he's more involved in the second half. But keep in mind, San Jose State eschewed a field goal attempt in the first half. Went forward on fourth down with the kicker. Strubeck will kick off here, throwing forward. And then they did not get the late uh, field goal attempt up. That's a potential six points they left on the table in the first half. It'll be a touchback here for Strubeck. And he picks up his ninth touchback of the season, the sophomore kicker. It was followed up as very strong freshman year of last year with a very good second year here in San Jose as West takes the knee and uh, Joe Fernandez. And here comes Fresno State. They did win the uh, flip to open the game, but they have deferred to the second half. So Tom Brandstater, the quarterback who was 7 of 12, 52 yards. He threw a interception on the game's first play for Fresno State. And he will pick it up here in the second half. 21-14 as we start the third quarter in San Jose. Brand Stater out of the shotgun as Dwayne right to his right. Play action in the rollout. And a catch and drop. West had the ball and dropped it. Chased in West. Right in the sun, though, as you can see that. It was in between the shade and the sun line, right where they meet over there. And I think right as he came into the sun, that ball hit him in the hands, but he lost sight of it. You know, Fresno State has to feel like they kind of got away with something there going into half. But it's really a big motivating factor for the Spartans going in there. They go in upset about what happened. They can come out fired up in the second half because of it. Second and ten. And off to right. And meeting him in the hole is Demaja Jones, the rover. He knew where he was going, and he got there and made a nice play. Well, you heard Pat Hill talk to Scott saying the key to the game is going to be us running the football, and that is on the shoulders of Dwayne Wright here. Well, and that offensive line is going to have to clear some holes up front. Demaja Jones having a nice game so far defensively for the Spartans, making a bunch of big plays today. Uh, he's a very fast linebacker, the senior playing his last game out of San Diego's famed Helix 
High School where Bill Wolf uh, first put it on the map and now Alex Smith and Reggie Bush have made us all know Helix. Third down and 12 for Brand Stater. Spartans rush four over the middle. Caught by Fernandez for the Fresno State first down. Tackled by Costello, the middle linebacker. That's a pickup of 22 yards on third down. Very nice composure by Brandstater in there, and that just sitting in the pocket, stepping up to deliver a strike downfield. You see, he's going to get a lot of pressure up off the outside. These guys are going to come and form the pocket. He's just going to step up into the pocket and deliver a strike. That's what you have to do as a quarterback: be able to maintain composure, keep your vision downfield, remain a passer. First and ten for Fresno State on their 40-yard line. And not much there at all for Dwayne Wright was playing his final collegiate game. He announced last week before the Louisiana Tech game, Mike, that he is going to forego his senior year. He's going to make himself available for the NFL draft in April. And he figures to be a first day draft pick in the National Football League, either a first, second or third round pick. Well, and always a couple considerations. Obviously, he has a family now with two children, but also it's hard to be a running back and not get injured. You're getting hit all the time. You think about all the horror stories of guys that have been getting injured. If you're going to be a top guy, you might as well take it. Big hole for right. And he's got a first down into San Jose State territory. A gaping hole there. Christopher Better. And he's safety on the tackle of right. And it's an uh, injury-ravaged offensive line here, Mike, but uh, they make a, a nice block here to get a big hole. All the flow going to the left there. Right doing a nice job of finding the hole and cutting back. Adam McDowell playing that right guard position, actually a converted defensive lineman playing over there, doing a nice job washing across that hole. And they've got a couple of former defenders that have moved over to the O-line. Anthony or Kenny Avon, the left tackle, also playing on the O-line as they run Anthony Harding here, giving a right a break. Costello on the tackle for San Jose State. And these are the young backs that will be taking over for Dwayne Wright. Anthony Harding, a true freshman from uh, Pittman High School in Turlock, California, where he rushed for over 1,600 yards last year as a senior. And also, Monye Miller, who ran for over 2,500 yards last year for Montana Kaiser. See, that was Tim Skipper there talking to him, son of Jim Skipper, my former coach in the XFL. Got a standout the team linebacker. The Demons ball deflected in the air and intercepted. Intercepted or not, drops. No. Brandstater had it. Lowry tipped the ball. Brandstater doing a nice job of playing defense at the end. Nacho had the ball, Mike. Carly Nacho number 95, as Lowry came and deflected the ball straight in the air. Good job by Dwight Lowry getting up in the quarterback's face. And watch Nacho come along. He has it. And Brandstater getting up there and swatting it out at the last second. Pulled him down, pulled his arm down. Yep. Nice play by the quarterback. Play by Lowry. quarterback. Lowry tried to be involved in the game in some way. Came at a blitz. They don't throw his way. He's a shutdown corner here. Third down and eight for Fresno State. Here's a blitz and a catch and a first down for Fresno State inside the 40-yard line. Shea, uh, Jade, a two-up on the a two-two on the uh, catch and run for Fresno State. Just taking advantage of that zone, the holes in the zone outside. Azura Tutu just sitting down out there, catching a little what they used to call a smash route. <laughs> Trying to get the extra yards afterwards. That's what Fresno State has to do. Run the ball hard inside, take the little stuff off the outside, and then go for the big one once you've softened up that Spartan defense. They came in a couple of uh, blitzers there that time, Mike, and they lost their footing trying to get to Brand Stater. Here's right again. Getting into the second level, and he runs out for a first down across the 30-yard line. Better on the tackle of Dwayne Wright. And he does get to that second level and beyond the secondary level, the third level, quite a bit. Downhill, downhill, and then make your move. And he just slides across. You know, he's not moving horizontally. He keeps horizontally. He keeps moving vertically down the field, north and south. 
keep your shoulders square down the field is a sign of a good running back. 84 yards today. He needs 121 yards today to move past Rod Rivers and come up with the uh, second best single season rushing mark in Fresno State history. So patient, gets off the pack and runs wide. Flag comes down here as he has tackled it around the 20 yard line. Let's see what the flag is for. Nice job by the right side of that offensive line of washing everything down, clearing it out there for right. Could be a hold here, and it is going to be a hold on Fresno State and likely on the left guard, Cole Popovich, number 62. Holding on the offense, number 62. Ten yards from the spot of the foul remains first down. Wow, good pickup. All those big bodies. You see this side of the line washing everybody down. But Popovich there. making a tackle, actually. I think he'll get credited defensively for a tackle rather than a hold. Although, I guess the guy has to have the ball, right? And he's the one guy there in that line that has not played on defense before. Avon, to his left, the left tackle has played on defense. And you mentioned Adam McDowell, the right guard, a former defender. Popovich, actually, a, a starter last year as a true freshman on the offensive line, the first true freshman who ever started on the O-line for Pat Hill. Uh, Anthony Harding comes in. Overall, it's been a pretty injury or a penalty free game. It is first and 18 now back out of the 34 yard line. Harding in for right. And he's down to the 29 yard line of San Jose State. Demetrius Jones on the tackle for the Spartans. Spartans are trying to hunker down, but they're not a great rush defense. They rank 85th in the nation in defending the run. They give up about 150 yards per game. And we talked to Tommy yesterday, and he said, we're going to have to zone blitz a little bit. We'll have to slide the extra man in the box. They know they're, we know they're coming downhill. And we've got to attack, uh, tackle these backs. Here's a play action. And under tackle, ball comes free. And the ball pops free. They're going to say he's down. He is down a sack for the Nacho again. Carly Nacho on the sack as Brandstater almost fumbled that ball away. Well, they were trying to go for the big strike. Brandstater was forced to hold the ball for longer. They're trying to throw an out and up, a wheel and up by the inside receiver. A little play action, and they have the receivers on the outside. The outside man is running the go. The inside man is running the out and up, so Brandstater forced to hold on to it, really trying to throw that ball away at the end. Could have been ruled intentional grounding. Now, it's not going to be a fumble, and it would have been an illegal forward pass had they called that, which would have been a loss of down. They don't turn it over very much, Fresno State, just 17 times in total, only five fumbles all year. Third down and 16 for Brand Stater. It is caught by Fernandez, well shy of the first down. And they'll likely bring in the punt team. Matt Costello on the tackle. Third and 16, that doesn't help very much. Now there's the punter. Zimmerman. And the 47 yard field goal, 48 yeah, yard field goal. They're going for a field goal. They're not going to bring in Zimmerman. They're going for a long field goal here by Stitzer. His long this year is 43 yards. He made a 44 yarder last year as a sophomore. This would be 48 yards away. Well, their punt team, as I said earlier, has not been very efficient this year. You might as well go for the field goal, try to get some points on the board. And he's got the distance. It is no good, though, wide to the right. No, no good for Stitzer from 48 yards away. And that'll give San Jose State a good drive start. And the missed long field goal, 8.41 to play. Boy, Dick Tomey's defense was on the field for a long time there. That was the opening drive of the second half. Yeah. Dick Tomey Spartans playing their final regular season game, and it's out of the bowl game, and you'll be hearing and reading a lot about the inaugural New Mexico Bowl. For more on that, we head downstairs to Scott Marsh. All right, Greg, thank you. Here with Dan Ballou, who is representing the New Mexico Bowl. Welcome to San Jose. Talk about how this bowl got started. Well, the bowl, believe it or not, got started when ESPN came to the city of Albuquerque in February of this year, said, hey, let's put together a bowl game where we can feature a Mountain West opponent versus a Western Athletic Conference opponent. So 
We did that, got our bowl certification, went through all the proper channels with the NCAA, and we're fired up about having San Jose State in Albuquerque later this month. Yeah, obviously having Dick Tomey as a part of the Spartan team means a lot to the bowl. Yes, it does. And with the uh, with the weight he carries in college football at this level, uh, it certainly does not hurt to have him in our bowl game. We're extremely delighted that uh, San Jose State accepted our invitation and that they're coming to Albuquerque. Well, Dan, I know you're here, you're here through the weekend. Enjoy your stay, and we'll look forward to seeing you later in the month. Very good. Thank you very much. Look forward to having all you uh, San Jose people down in Albuquerque. Thank you very much. All right, Greg, let's go back up to you. And I've been to Albuquerque several times, a great uh, city, and they'll be up against the host school, New Mexico, on December the 23rd. This will be the first time they've ever played a bowl game outside of the state of California. In Albuquerque, great this time of year. Second and ten. And that ball's intercepted. He was trying to get it into Coleman, and it was intercepted by the linebacker, Goodwin, who came up with the fumble return for a score earlier. So his second big play on defense. Goodwin again in the perfect spot at the perfect time. See Arroyo not very happy trying to coach up his quarterback. Clearly a misread by his quarterback to Frolis. Looking down the field, came back to the short side to his check down. And Goodwin was actually in better position to make that play than Chester Coleman. So another big turnover committed by San Jose State. Now the fumble earlier by Patrick Perry. And We'll get into this more when San Jose State gets the football back, but Giannis Davis has not been uh, much of a factor. In fact, you, you may make the point he's being benched here. I'm not sure if anything is wrong with him physically, but Perry is taking over. Here's Dwayne Wright for Fresno State, again, shedding the first wave of tacklers and uh, pecking and hemming his way forward for about four yards. Well, I think in terms of Giannis Davis, San Jose State wanted a guy that was going to run downhill those physical matchups, they they know that they're not as physical up front as Fresno State is. They want to use Davis to the outside, get him involved in the, in the game to the outside. But Perry, really a better downhill runner. Now we told you Davis needs 53 yards to get to 1,000 on the year. And his last two games have not been good at all. Right hit behind the line, a huge loss there. Freddie McCutcheon shot the gap, the defensive tackle comes up with a, with a well-timed stuff. They needed that play. Great play by McCutcheon, getting low. You'll see him shooting in from the left side of the screen there. Great reaction by a defensive lineman. You're supposed to fight across pressure. So if you have a lineman trying to block you to your left, you're supposed to fight across his face and make the play. Freddie McCutcheon used his quickness there to get in the backfield, make a big tackle. There's no doubt he's their most talented defensive lineman a couple of years at Long Beach City College. And Playing his last home game here, the senior, Brand Stater setting up a screen. It is caught by the tight end, Pasco, and he's going to run inside the 10 and be spilled at the five-yard line. Lowry saves the touchdown. A 27-yard tight end screen to Ver Pasco. Absolutely nobody home on that left side. All flow going this direction. You see Brand Stater looking that way, coming back with the screen. And here's the difference between a running back or a receiver with the ball and a tight end in Pasco. A running back or receiver sets up that block, cuts back for the touchdown. Pasco just decides to take the outside route, tries to hit the pylon, but Lowry was there to make the tackle. And he got off the block of Kenny Ava on the left tackle and was able to knock him down shy of the goal line. West goes in short motion, first and goal. They moved down the offensive line. There's going to be a false start. I believe on the right guard, Adam McDowell. Final snap, false start on the offense. Number 79, five-yard penalty remains first down. Now it's on the right tackle, Chris Denman, and it'll push him out. Now first and goal from the nine-yard line. Pat Hill not very happy about that. Obviously a former offensive line coach himself. He wants to see those big guys execute. You, their problem all year long has been that they didn't make the big plays and didn't execute in the big games when they needed to. He doesn't want to see them set themselves back now that they're down in the red zone. Now he was the offensive line coach under the great Jim Sweeney in Fresno from 84 through 89. He also coached, uh, coached the O-line for Dick Tomey and was his offensive coordinator in Arizona. Grant Stater on the roll will throw for the end zone. Was unhappy with his offense.
offensive line, you set yourself back, you change what your thinking is. You go from running the ball three times, going for the goal line, to having to run the play action pass. That penalty set up the interception. They took themselves out of the mindset of being able to run it three times, forced themselves to pass. Brand Stater, obviously, not a very smart throwback. As a quarterback, you don't throw back across your body without finding your receiver, making sure he's open first. Because if he didn't pick it, if Costello didn't make that pick, you had Chris Owens right there as well to make the interception. So a bad throw by Brand Stater, but the penalty before is what set that up, and that is why Pat Hill was so upset. A big penalty on Deadman and a forced ball by Brandstater. And it is Perry, who was the featured back here for San Jose State, not Giannis Davis. Alan Goodwin having a terrific game for Fresno State. Comes up with the tackle on Perry, who's a sophomore. And as Mike noted, he's more of a, of a downhill runner at 5'10", 205, as opposed to Giannis Davis, who goes only a buck 80. But Giannis Davis came into the game today 53 yards away from getting to 1,000 on the year. Maybe he's injured. We shall see. Here's to Frelis. will keep it again on the option. Well, he's kept it perfectly today, Mike, making good decisions not to pitch and turning it uh, upfield and picking up some runs. Well, that's film work. You know that the coaches for San Jose State saw weakness there by Fresno, the way that they pursue, knowing their linebackers are so active, they knew that hole would be there. And so Prellis said he's going to run up, get that hole, take advantage of it. That was a weakness. They decided they were going to exploit it in their game plan, and now they're doing it to perfection. Now we have checked with Scott Marsh on the San Jose State sideline. Uh, maybe uh, Giannis Davis had a hip injury of some kind, but he says there is no injury to report. First and 10, 26 yard line. There's Perry in the right flat. And he fumbles the ball and got back on it. Recovered his own fumble at the 31 yard line. It was Perry that fumbled the ball up in the air and was taken by Goodwin back 28 yards for a score. Josh Shirley, the safety and second leading tackler for Fresno State, forced that ball out. Perry keeps doing that, I guarantee you he won't be the featured back for very long. You want to make sure that you have ball security back there. Patrick Perry needs to hold on to that ball. He lost one going to the left earlier. He just fumbled that one going to his right. Flannis doing it with both his arm and his legs today as Davis looks out. And the reason we thought maybe it was a hip injury is his pants undone. Pants undone, the gloves tucked in the back. Doesn't seem like a guy is healthy. We shall see. Second down, quick throw out Chester Coleman. Play by McCauley, who if this is going to be his last game, he is a senior, so it will be his last game at Fresno State. He's going out with a bang. Guy who had a terrific junior year. And he's had a bit of a rough senior season, although that's not for guys that are going to play at the next level. Sometimes that, that does happen where guys get a little distracted knowing they're going to the NFL and they don't come back with the same focus their senior year as they did their junior year. Well, and that's part of it, too. Coming back as a senior, having too much confidence going in. Steve, if teams start to pick on you, corner, you have to have the thickest skin of any position on the field because you're going to get beat. Third and two play action. Goodwin a blitz, and he hits to Brallis. What a game Allen Goodwin is having. Fumble recovery for score and interception, and now he comes in unblocked on the blitz and right into Tefralis on the rollout. And he was coming all the way off that side. Tefralis has to know that he's coming. If you stay in the play, be able to get rid of that ball in a hurry, and he just wasn't ready quick enough to get rid of that football. That is all about the pre-snap read. As a quarterback, you have to know that he's coming, be able to react. Joe Fernandez back to return the punt of Waylon Frather. It'll bounce. Directly out of bounds at the 32-yard line of Fresno State. Only a 34-yard punt from Prather. So to Frales, talking it over with his quarterback coach, Marcus Arroyo, trying to get the momentum back here in the second half. To begin your Radisson experience, 916-920-2020. And there is Giannis Davis. We just got the update from Lawrence Fan, the SID here at San Jose State. He actually does have a strained groin. So you're right, Greg. He was limping around on the sidelines down there, and his pants undone. Obviously not going to be back in the game. There's right on the handoff on first and ten. Again, shedding the first wave. This guy gets into the second and third level. I think more than any back I've seen. Does not have the breakaway speed because of the knee injury a couple of years ago. That may come back as a pro. But another 
Nice little rip off there by Wright as he goes for 13 yards. And a great job. Look at the big guys up front clearing it out. Getting a nice push to that right side and then Wright figuring out where the hole is, finding it, having enough patience to let that hole develop in front of him and taking advantage of it. He is one yard away from another 100 yard rushing day. Dwayne Wright out of uh, San Diego and he's over 100 now. And the first down carry, he is from Lincoln High School in San Diego, the same school that produced uh, the Hall of Famer Marcus Allen and a potential Hall of Famer in Terrell Davis. Speaking of Hall of Famers, Lawrence Fan, when he said he uh, had a groin injury, Giannis Davis, is he able to come back in the game? Do we? He did not say whether he's going to come back, but obviously with the pants undone, the gloves tucked in, he's walking around like he's not going to see any more action. He's laying back, so that would end, end his year. Although the, 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 the stats do get carried over to the bowl game, so he could go over a thousand yards in the New Mexico Bowl. Here's Wright running out to midfield on a second down and eight, so it'll be third down at about five coming up for Fresno State. Matt Costello, Mike, as you mentioned, fifth leading tackler in the nation, and he comes up with another one. Wayne Wright taking himself out, getting a little breather here. He has now 102 yards on the day, so he needs 19 more to pass Ron Rivers to get to second most in a, a single season. We'll have more on those numbers as he gets closer. Third down and five. Big play coming up for the Bulldogs from midfield. He looked left, now middle, now pressure, throws, caught by Pasco, but shy of the first down. As he's tackled by three Spartans, will signal out Costello. And that's fourth down of about three coming up for Fresno State. Just a big bunch route out there for Fresno State, and Brand State are trying to pump. Pasco had to follow him back downhill. 21-14 as we head to the fourth quarter here. Two old-time rivals. 21-14 Spartans over the Bulldogs. Touchback. We've got Trent Dilfer with the uh, 49ers and obviously Billy Volick, formerly with the Titans, now playing with the uh, San Diego Chargers, backing up Phillip Rivers. So to Prellis, Mike, and the uh, Spartans will try to, to get going a bit here. They've not had any offensive rhythm in the second half. Well, Tafrellis has to get something going. You saw Marcus Arroyo talking to him, his quarterback coach on the sideline, telling him, make the right read, make the right delivery. He just has to execute, and there's a quarterback. Manage the game, use the running game off the outside. They got Jabri Sharp in there again as that fullback in the backfield, so you can look for him to run that ball downhill. Big junior out of uh, Oakland Skyline High School is, they're hoping they moved on the offensive line because they all jumped. Marlon Briscoe, the defensive end. And that was not magic the way he came across the line. He really did. Here's Frank White, our referee. Prior snap, offside on the defense, number 94. Five yard penalty, still closed out. Now Briscoe jumped, so did uh, John Manga, and they single out 94 Manga. You're too young to remember Marlon the Magician Briscoe, aren't you? I am. Never heard of him? But thank you for asking. Former uh, great first quarterback, and uh, they moved him, African-American, gave him a chance to play quarterback, and they moved him to wide receiver in the NFL with the, uh, the Broncos and the Bills and later wound up with the, the Dolphins of the mid-'70s. Tefrellis here, just two for four since halftime, for just eight yards plus the interception, and they have to go their lead back Davis so Perry or is that Callier I think it was James Callier the fullback certainly downhill type runner able to power forward and run for a San Jose State first down well they got the freebie from Fresno State on that offsides penalty again Fresno State a little bit of self-destructing going on here down on the goal line in the red zone they had the offside or the offsides penalty on the offense now they had an offsides penalty on the defense getting themselves in trouble with penalties and they're trying to hurry up the attack here to get their offensive rhythm as Defrenis will audibleize at the line play clock at nine he has plenty of time there's the handoff Perry hitting the backfield and stuck for a big loft there as Dwayne Adams the middle linebacker came at a run blitz and absolutely nobody there to block Andrews that offensive line trying to push this way across to the left but you see Andrews just breaking free out of nowhere and it's hard to run the ball when you get a linebacker wrapped around your shoulders like that. They tried to pull 
Marcel Burrow, who is now playing in on the offensive line for San Jose State. Second down and 13 coming up for the Spartans. And a score in his third quarter to Frelis. And it is caught by Jones, but he runs for a first down. McCauley went for the interception and the pick six the other way. He missed the ball, and Jones picks up the first down. McCauley actually in position to make the play. He ended up slipping on his last plant snap. Coach Pat Hill told us yesterday this field's in as good a shape as he's seen it in since he's been playing here. But there's been a lot of guys slipping out there tonight. Well, McCauley had that one. He was right there on it, and it he was going it. the other way had he not slipped. He read it. How about James Jones coming up with some clutch catches tonight? Yeah, he's had a big game, Jones. Five catches for 76 yards. Jeff on first down and a run. He's an opening off the right side. Lane will tackle him, and he gets popped hard, shy of the first down. Lane and Andrews, the two linebackers, with a tough tackle, but that's a tough quarterback to Frelis. Actually had a shot to throw that ball down the field, but a pretty heads-up play by a quarterback. Don't take a risky shot. If you got green grass in front of you, take it. Try to move the sticks. You know, get you into second and short here. And Andrews trying to deliver a little extra love there at the end of the run. So Flalis came into the game with 118 yards rushing all year, and he has rushed today for 68 yards. And he is San Jose State's top rusher today. 6'2", 215-pound quarterback. Second down and two. That's caught by Coleman for a first down. Pushed out by McCauley at the Fresno State 32-yard line. DeFrellis actually made a nice one-hand grab on that snap. Had to reach down with that left hand. The ball low to his left side. Did a good job of getting that ball centered back up. Fingers on the laces and throwing a tight spiral out there. Good delivery. 16 yards to... Coleman, who was having a good game himself. Coleman only 14 catches all year, Mike. He's got five catches today. Yeah, Broussard and James Jones have really been the go-to guys, the number three guy all year long, Chester Coleman, but having a very nice day, as you said, Greg. And he's winding up his career. Senior from Compton. There's the handoff to Callier on the dive. Not a lot there as they fake the pitch to the freshman, Cameron Island. And we had a wild first half, a wild ebb and flow. San Jose State, three and a half minutes into the game, had two touchdowns and led 14-0. Fresno State came back, got a defensive touchdown to tie the game at 14. San Jose State scored on a fourth and two. They went for it and went for the whole thing. A touchdown pass to James Jones to go up at halftime. But in the third quarter, this game has slowed down, and neither team has been able to do a whole lot offensively. Also, San Jose State is driven from their 20-yard line here inside the Bulldog 35. Second and nine. To Prattis, and if he wants to run again, he gets a block and he goes down the outside. And he stays on his feet and he's very close to another first down. Heads up play. Did you see him look at the sidelines and think, I've got to keep this clock running. I'm not going out of bounds. Stay in bounds. Keep it moving. Matt Cantu, the left tackle, with a nice block, allowed him to get the corner. But watch him. Okay, nobody there. Don't make a risky pass. He's going to run with this ball. Cantu just burying somebody on the outside. But he cuts back away from the sideline. Headsy play by a quarterback who's really confidence-wise picked up this season. And you see there the leadership. Stay in bounds. Keep the clock running. They are going to measure as he ran for nine on that last carry. What a rushing game. He has 77 yards rushing today. The quarterback, Adam Tefrellis, on six uh, very nice scrambles. He's just short here. Now it's third down and about a foot. Pat Hill encouraging his defense to hunker down here and get the ball back. I would expect to see Dick Tomey go for the end zone right here. Take a shot. You got second and very, very short. It's third down. Excuse me, third and short. So get the first down and keep the clock moving. Well, you got fourth down as well. No one told me he may take a shot here. Let's see what they do. A little play action inside. Did you pre sharpen the game again at that fullback position? The field goal, if they do go third and long, third and one and go deep here and don't come up, the field goal would be 42 yards away. Strubeck has made a 48 yarder this year against New Mexico State. Let's see what they do. They're going to bring it sharp, as you mentioned. I can go with a heavy set, big pullback guard in the backfield. Ahead of Patrick Perry. Solid outside. Broussard, one on one, matching up with Damon Jenkins. Might they go that way? Now they're going to hand off to Perry, and he's able to extend. I don't know if he got it or not. 
He didn't get much, but he didn't need much. Only a foot. It'll depend on the spot. The official on this side is giving him a spot. It looks like it would be good for a first down. The official on the far side. I think by that also spot, gave him a pretty decent it. spot. He's yeah. got it. He's inside the 23. So the first down is obtained. Tyler Klutz, the defensive end, the best player in the front for Pat Hill, could not quite get Perry down in time. Now Patrick Perry, the sophomore out of Banning High School in Los Angeles, taking over for the injured Giannis Davis. We thought Mike would like to see this. Boy, a little closer than many people thought. Nate Longshore. Throws for 217, and your Bears make it five in a row. I thought it was going to be a slaughter out there today, but obviously in the big game, anything can happen. They are going to confirm with the measurement here called by Fat Hill or asked for, and they do pick up the, the first down. And it's not a cardinal tie you're wearing today, Mike, is it? No, it's not. I'm trying to be impartial in our game. It's Greg. not blue, nor is it gold. It is not blue or gold. Yeah, it looks, looks red to me. It is a shade in that direction, but it is not cardinal. Thank you for noticing, though. Just a, you look sharp. Like you look, I like it very much. Thank you. Just a little, and my wife gave me trouble for it. why you I, wear that today. When I left the house, my wife gave me trouble because she is also Same a thing. Cal alum. Same thing. Now here's the pitch. Perry cuts inside. That's right up the uh, block of McGriff. Bradis McGriff, the right tackle. But Goodwin makes the eventual tackle. But Perry on the pitch. That time, a well-timed pitch by Tefratis there. Did not keep it. And Perry, it's a nice run. Good job pitching the ball. Watch McGriff out in front here. Come on, big man. Get out of my way. And he went to those big Harris. guys. Sorry about that, Greg. Good. Those big guys are just lost out there in space. They never know what to do. They got to get their hands on somebody. He went to ASU, actually, in 04, redshirted there, never played for the Sun Devils. His dad, Brad, is uh, same name, was a football player at Tennessee State. And there's Callier, James T. Callier, the older of the two half brothers. He's a junior, his younger brother, James, a, uh, a sophomore. A clock rolling here as we approach 10 minutes to play in the game. Sun beginning to set here on this December Saturday in the South Bay. Good crowd. Over 20,000. They're hoping to watch the Spartans wind up the home schedule. What a year it has been already. This game really is largely immaterial as far as the postseason. They're going to the bowl game in New Mexico, but they want to win this football game and they'll give these fans here a big celebration to beat the Bulldogs. Second down. There's Broussard going up for it, going out of the way, and no flag. As Damon Jenkins came over the top right at the right time, they say, and not early to knock that ball away from Broussard. Jenkins is in perfect position for that, but Tafralis has to put a little more on that. He kind of pulled the string on this ball, didn't throw it as well as he should have. He had Broussard open downfield. Broussard had taken an inside release. If he throws it back to the back of the end zone, Broussard can lay out for it, but instead he let Jenkins react to it and make a play on it. And now it's third down. They're already in field goal range to go up by two scores. They go into an eye formation with three wide receivers. Coleman and Broussard are slotted left. James Jones is right. Here's Perry. And he fights inside the 10. It'll be fourth down there. They'll bring in Jared Strubeck and try to go up by 10 points here with nine minutes to play. I'm willing to bet that they're actually going to kick it this time. <laughs> I think you're right. Nice job of taking a ton of time off the clock, a good offensive drive, move the ball down the field, and the whole time, two and clock. 25-yard attempt. And Zagoyo and James Jones talk it over on the sideline. Jared Strubeck, 8 of 11 on the year, 73%. 25-yard attempt. And he's got it right through the middle, and San Jose State has a lead of 10. At 24 to 14 with 8.50 to play. Just a chip shot for Strubeck, pulled out the pitching wedge, hit it right down the middle. So Fresno State trying to end the season on an upswing. They've got to score 10 points in less than 10 minutes. 
David Carr and the Houston Texans will be in town tomorrow to take on the Raiders in Oakland and to talk all about it and everything Raider related. Check out Raider Press Conference Live with Raider head coach Art Shell each and every Monday at 1 o'clock exclusively right here on uh, Copcast Sportsnet. Jim Cosimore and Mike Lang get you all set for the Raider head coach. David Carr and the Texans had never played in Oakland before. And they're a former great Fresno State quarterback and number one draft pick overall in the NFL draft in 02. First ever pick in the Texans franchise. They are getting in town right about now to play the Raiders tomorrow. Strubeck will kick off following his 25-yard field goal. They give San Jose State the 10-point lead. Short kickoff taken by West. Is tripped up and dropped on the 22 yard line. Well, that group is what Dick Tomey referred to as the wild bunch, what they call their kickoff cover team out there. Doing a nice job of keeping Fresno State pinned. And right now, they're looking for a big defensive effort. They get a big defensive effort here. They can seal it and just run the clock. So, how does uh, Pat Hill and the Bulldogs play it here? They're down two scores. They've got time. They've got eight and a half minutes to play. Do they have to open it up a little bit, or are they still going to run Dwayne Wright? Well, they're going to mix it up, but they're going to have to open it up some. No flags on that. Curious snap and a high throw and incomplete. Well, the quarterback and the center were on the same snap count. Everybody else was on two. But Brandstater was in there with Ryan Wendell. They were on one. So as long as those are the only two that are moving, it's not a penalty. Just off the fingertips of Azura 2 2 and incomplete. Owens on the coverage. Second and 10 for Fresno State. And they will run right. Gets off a of one hit and not the second one. Matt Costello gets in there and makes another tackle. The junior linebacker out of Valley Christian High School. And this guy's an absolute stud. Tommy Williams, defensive coordinator here, linebacker's coach for San Jose State, told me. If this guy had walked off the surface of the moon, he would still make the most tackles on the team because he has such great instincts for the game. Third down and 11 for Fresno State. Under eight minutes to play. Sitting out there on Fernandez. He broke down before Fernandez ever even got into his route. And Brandstater ended up paying the price for it. Just a five step drop. Two hitches, though. He got popped right in the chin there, Freddie McCutcheon. Well, he got hurt early in the year in the game against Oregon and injured his ribs on his right side, and he has not been healthy. For several weeks, he was not healthy, but now he is after being benched for a couple of games. Zimmerman in the punt again for Fresno State. Jones let a bounce on the 45-yard line, and it'll be down there. So San Jose State now seven minutes and 28 seconds away from uh, beating the Fresno State Bulldogs. It's been 16 years since they've gone bowling, but it's been the same length of time since they've beaten Fresno. 728 left to go here from Spartan Stadium. San Jose State leading Fresno State 24 to 14. Scott Marsh here on the sidelines. A lot of parallels with this 2006 San Jose State team with the 1990 team. First of all, the defense has given up their fewest points allowed since 1990. With a win today, eight victories. 1990, they had eight victories. And of course, the last time they went to a bowl game, you guessed it, 1990. And finally, Greg, 1990 also was the last time San Jose State beat Fresno State. So I think a song, I know you referenced the fabulous freshman, I believe, earlier in the game, the four freshmen from the 50s. Hadn't heard of that one, but maybe a new song for them could be Princess. They want to party like it's 1990. Back up to you, Greg. Oh, very nicely done as Patrick Perry takes it off the right side, Scott, on a first and 10. And they will party like it's 1990 if they get the win. Lane and uh, Damon Jenkins on the tackle for Perry, who was playing for the injured Giannis Davis, who's been out since the second quarter with a groin injury. He has not carried the ball at all, not played at all in the second half. 
in that 1990 squad here for San Jose State was a very good team. Guys like Hesh Kalar on the team, and Mike Shalaba, their quarterback, Matt Beach. They had Sheldon Canley, some really good running backs. They went nine, two, and one that year. Mr. Frelis got a pitch to Perry. Tries to get wide. He will turn the corner. He slips down, shy of the first down. It'll be third down at about two coming up for the Spartans. Roussard actually had a nice block out there on McCauley. Had Patrick Perry been able to turn up field. That's where that man excels, Giannis Davis. He actually has the ability to make that quick cut upfield. A little bit smaller guy, lower center of gravity. He can make those kind of cuts. Perry, a better inside runner. Here's a big play coming up for San Jose State. We have less than six minutes to play in the game. They are six of 11 on third down. This is third down and three. Tefratis will throw. And he's going to get sack spun down second time today. They get in there and sack him. John Manga on the sack for Fresno State. They had to come up with that play. And it's fourth down. And that makes 29 sacks on the year for that Fresno State defense. They were number three in the whack coming into the game. They will bring in the uh, punter Prather here. Needs a big one. Joe Fernandez in his final collegiate game. And he's son of the uh, great Swervin Mervin Fernandez who played at San Jose State in the early 80s before going out of the NFL with the Raiders. The Spartans will take the delay of game penalty here to as much time off the clock as possible. Play clock at three, two, one, and they'll take the five yards here and take the clock down to 4.53 to play in the game. First half, delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, remains fourth down. You know, Dick Tomey needs a big punt here from Waylon Prather, a guy who uh, he referred to yesterday as the best punter I have ever been around. Averaging 44 yards a kick, number one in the WAC all year, and number 14 in the nation. Coach Tommy big on the kicking game over on the sideline. Got a stopwatch working right now. Isaacovic with a good snap, and Prather unloads one. Fernandez calling for a fair catch. Beautifully done. Broussard, the gunner, there to force the... Fair catch, a 44-yard punt with no return. He is pretty good, isn't he? Well, they have a four minutes and 44 seconds, and they've got to score twice. 4.47 to play. We've been talking about 1990. First time since 1990, a lot of categories, but with this crowd today, over 22,000 years, the first time since 86 that San Jose State has had three crowds of 20,000 or more. They almost had 30,000 here when uh, the Stanford Cardinal came in in week two. Brand Stater, and he hits Pasco, big bear over the middle, goes the tight end for a first down. Let's go way back when, Mike, a little after one o'clock today. Remember the first play from scrimmage? San Jose State sending a message that they were going to go after it right from the beginning. Adam Tafralis back there when the sun was still on the grass, throwing a big post. Grant Stater into trouble, ball deflected up in the air, and it should have been intercepted. He was trying to go to Chaston West. Demaja Jones was there. That ball was deflected up in the air where Lowry, the ball hawk, was, but it hit the ground safely. Ball thrown behind West. You see, this is on his back shoulder. Demaja Jones actually making the play, tipping it up. That's what you get when you have a linebacker trying to handle the ball. Jones actually converted safety. That would have been a game sealer for the Spartans right there. Senior walked on here in 03 and now playing his last collegiate game here at Spartan Stadium. Of course, they have the bowl game coming up two days before Christmas in Albuquerque. Second and 10 for Brand Stater. Over the middle in a double coverage, but again, that big tight end, Bear Pasco, makes the catch and picks up the first down. What a target he is at 6'5", 260 pounds. Actually had the underneath receiver wide open with a little bit of running room, but forced it into Pasco, and Pasco able to use that big body to shield off the defenders and make the catch. Four minutes and 15 seconds to play. Fresno State is down 10. They've got to score twice. Stater, caught, and out of bounds 
goes the young receiver Jason Crawley. He's a, another redshirt freshman from uh, Pittsburgh High School where he played some quarterback himself. Actually took a snap under center this year for Fresno. We saw him with that big drop in the first half. The Brandstander just delivering the comeback on the outside. And good heads up play by Crawley to get out of bounds and stop that clock. They did not get a great spot. They did not get the first down on that catch. Pat Hill's not happy with that. So it's second down and one. 404 to play. West moves in motion. Followed by Demasha Jones. San Jose State rushes four. That's good enough to get some pressure on him up the middle. And off the back foot, he throws incomplete. Jared Gilbert got the heat. He was trying to go over the middle. As your 2 2 and West were in the area, but uh, Gilbert forced a bad throw. Incomplete, but very risky. If you're going to throw that ball away, don't throw it away over the middle. There's too many blue jerseys inside. Remember, they didn't get the first down yet. It was second and one. They got a bad spot. Now it's third down and one. See if they run the ball here. As right is to the right of a brand stater. They will give it to him on the inside handoff. And he has tackled it just across midfield. Good open field tackle there by Demetrius Jones. First down, Bulldogs. Under four minutes to play. And they are on the ball. They are getting into that hurry up offensive mode. They've got four on the line, including a big bear Pasco, the tight end. And into traffic and caught by West at the 40 yard line. He threw in a double coverage that time. Very dangerous, but Chaston West, the redshirt freshman from Moore Park, California, made a nice catch, Mike, in a crowd. Absolutely. Blue shirts all around him, and Brandstater just sticking it in a tight little window there for West. Now you back. See Costello is there, and DeMonte Jones, or excuse me, Demetrius Jones. Back to live action. Bear Pasco picks up the first down on the second and one. A short catch again by the tight end. 3.20 to play. They wait to run the clock as they move the change in college football so a long time. They, they can do this. Two scores down. Brand Stater. On first and ten. Again, they rush four. He's throwing deep this time for Fernandez. Intercepted by Owens. Christopher Owens with a second interception of the game. And Fernandez with a jump ball inside the five. And Owens comes away with it. And a happy crowd here at Spartan Stadium. Brandstander just forcing that ball. Once again, Christopher Owens in perfect position downfield. He's looking back at the quarterback the whole way, and Brandstader never took his eyes off Fernandez. But look at the position. Owens in better position to make that play than Fernandez. And just forced it in. The difference is if you have a DB who's turned around and trying to run with your receiver, not looking back at the quarterback, you take that shot because your receiver can react to it. But Owens was looking back at Brandstater the whole way so he can play that ball like a receiver. And there's your defensive hero of the game, Christopher Owens. Two big interceptions on the game. Came into the game with two all year, and now he's got four. Costello got one of the goal line earlier. So three interceptions thrown by Brandstater. And now the young back Perry will try to run the clock out and get San Jose State their eighth win of the year. And that elusive victory over Fresno State. Fresno State calling the timeout, but uh, they have all three left before that. So they have two left now. And there's our hero on defense. But effectively, that's a game sealer for San Jose State. Timeout called by Pat Hill. They have two timeouts left, 226 away from beating the Fresno State Bulldogs. Greg Papa, Mike Pulaski, Scott Marsh back at San Jose. Second and nine. Here's Perry on the handoff. Not a lot there. As they stack it up in the middle. Marlon Briscoe, the defensive end. There to make the tackle along with Dwayne Andrew, Andrews. Final regular season game here, but make your plans to be with the Spartans coming up in three weeks' time when they take on it. New Mexico in the inaugural New Mexico Bowl, December the 23rd, 1.30 kickoff. Be there. 
408-924-SJTX and online at sjsuspartans.com. Dick Tomey has his Spartans in a bowl game. Incredible, Mike. He took over a program here. And remember, he replaced Fitz Hill after the 2004 year. And there was some debate on this campus whether they would continue to play football anymore. We talked to Don Cassing at halftime, the president. He's such a, a big advocate of their athletic program. That's unlikely it would have happened. But there were some whispers on this campus with some members of the faculty to do away with football. And now, look at this. Two years later, they're going to a bowl game. Going to a bowl game, earning money on the bowl game, getting more fans in the stands here. Just having incredible success. And what it does, too, outside of the monetary value, as a university, you want to enrich your students' lives. So the football players actually having it enriches their lives because they get the success of playing but your students as well get to look back to the great days with your team winning while you were there that's what a winning program brings to a university they talk about diversity on campus all the time having a great athletic program is part of that diversity and enhances the entire college experience without question here's a big play third and eight with two and a half to play on the option, Trapanis will keep it. This time he will not run for a first down. Fresno State has one timeout left. Marlon Briscoe. And again, the magician comes up with a tackle. They'll take the timeout here and stop it with 2.20 to play. You don't think Fresno State's going to come after this kick, do you? You got seven block kicks on the year. Only one of those is the block punt, but they're known for blocking kicks. They have 70 block kicks overall since Pat Hill took over in 1997, which leads the NC2A. That's amazing. There's John Baxter, their special teams coach, so they're obviously going to go for a block. Yeah, since 97, they have 70 block kicks. That's amazing. It's an incredible stat. Well, Giannis Davis is done. It was a groin injury, was the report from Lawrence Fan, the sports information director here at San Jose State. Giannis Davis will wind up the regular year just slightly below 1,000 on the year, but look at a chance to uh, pick up the grant as all the stats do carry over to the bowl game. Now here's Prather, great punter against Joel Fernandez, a great punt returner for Fresno State was taking over for Clifton and Smith. Prather gets it away and bangs one. Fernandez fumbles it, picks it up, and now he breaks one tackle, a second tackle, but by fumbling it, a wave hit him. A 48-yard punt by Prather there at the end of the game. Al Gidry in on the eventual tackle for San Jose State. Great job getting that ball away by Prather. He knew they were coming, actually had to jump to feel that snap. But he didn't care. He just wanted to get that ball downfield. He actually outkicked his coverage. But when Fernandez bobbled it down there, it allowed San Jose State to get down in coverage. And now it makes it very difficult for Fresno State. It was already going to be a most difficult challenge for Tom Brandstater. But they're going to start this drive inside their 10-yard line. Here's the pressure over the middle. Caught sliding catch by Fernandez. The Spartans saying trap. And now the officials say trap. No catch. Well, tough back-to-back -back plays for Fernandez. Fumbled the punt, and then came back now and didn't make this catch. That's a good yep, call. It's a good call by the official. Never had control of it, and the ball hit the ground. He had it, and then he went down to the ground. The nose of the ball hit the ground, and then it popped away. No catch. 156 to play. Second down for Tom Brandstater and the Bulldogs. Up against his goal line, he throws short to right, and he dives to get out of bounds, and he will stop the clock. Good he job. got off the tackle that. of Rhino Gonzalez, just enough to lunge and hit the sideline like it was the goal line to stop the clock with 149 to play. Good heads up play by Wright to get over to that sideline. You know, a lot of times the NFL scouts look for those kind of things in players. Do they think on their feet? These guys know game situations. Middle of the field right now is the most open spot going against prevent defense down the middle of the field is where you look because they don't want to let receivers get to the outside and stop the block. Third and five. Over the middle they go. Caught Fernandez. Almost kept his feet, but he was knocked down on a double hit by Costello and Toombs. Joaquin Joaquin Toombs. Toombs. We've not talked about him, but he's had a terrific year. The uh, senior safety. 
didn't get to participate in spring ball, didn't get to participate in fall camp. They were working on some eligibility issues. Finally made it back to the team, had to catch up in a hurry, but it's really solidified that defensive back. Well, he's a big hitter. He leveled uh, Evan Moore to get the Stanford victory clinched, and he popped Joe Fernandez. He's not able to come out. Crawley with the catch. Clock rolling loud, less than 90 seconds to play. And Toombs got up a little bit wobbly, too. Second down. It is caught by Crawley. A flag comes down immediately. Rhino Gonzalez with the tackle. See what the flag is for as they push and shove after the play here. 1-11 to play. Frank White, our referee, he didn't call a single penalty for the game's first 20 minutes. Interference on the offense. And that's going to be a pick route out there on the outside or a rub route by the receivers. You have one guy come across and pick for another. They're supposed to make it look like they're not trying to get in the that's TV's way. On the offense, number six, 15-yard penalty for the previous spot. And it's designed. It's designed pass interference. You do that in the film room or on the chalkboard to talk about setting up, setting up and getting a rub route. Let's uh, head downstairs, check in with... With Scott. All right, Greg, thank you. An interesting note, the San Jose State defense rises to the occasion this second half. If they shut out Fresno State here today, it'll be the fifth time they shut out a team in the second half. Goes back to Stanford, San Diego State, Utah State, and most recently, New Mexico State. So this is a great second half defense, Greg. Bear Pasco with a catch over the middle, converting on third down and 16. He picks up 20. Under a minute to play. Fresno State, they won their game last Friday night in the final seconds of the touchdown run by Wright, but that was a tie game. They're down 10 points here. Bosco, big game now, seven catches for 87 yards. Throw on left, almost picked up by Dimaja Jones. That's a second pick he's almost had today. And again, that ball a little bit behind West allowed Dimaja Jones to drive on it. And West leaning away as a receiver. You got to stay in there. Use your body. Keep that position. Make the catch. 47 seconds away from making this a, a rivalry once again. As Dick Tomey said, you can't call it a rivalry. They buried us for 12 straight times in 16 years has been since the last victory. Their goal was to make it a rivalry, and they have done that. There's the single season record Dwight Lowry with his ninth interception of the year and that is the exclamation point the Spartans are back nine picks and they pretty much stopped throwing at him after the middle of the year this guy has just been a great pickup for coach Tomey and his defense you see him in perfect position great anticipation to come up and make that play Coach Tomey told us yesterday, this guy has the best instincts around the football of any corner he's ever been around. That includes Daryl Lewis, who was a Jim Thorpe Award winner. It includes Chris McAllister, first round draft pick. I mean, you're talking about some great corners that Coach Tomey has coached. And he said, this guy is better than any of them around the ball. Out of timeouts and out of hope now and out of time. Fresno State is beaten by Dick Tomey and San Jose State for the first time since 1990. Pat Hill and uh, Dick very close as Dick had him on his staff at the University of Arizona in 1990 and 91. And as Scott said earlier, you can uh, cue Prince now. Look at a party here like it's 1990. All over again. What a huge win for the Spartans. Adam Tefralis with Brandstatter. Brandstatter threw four interceptions today. All right, Greg, thank you here with Coach Toby. Obviously a very celebrating team, staff, students, everybody. This one's got to feel really good, Coach. It does. These guys have played great all year, 
And this is the one we wanted more than any of them, and they played great tonight. I know you're going to a bowl game, but when you set out your goals for the year, I know you had a specific goal to beat Fresno State. We did. We did. And, uh, you know, we got to do it more, but but this is a this is start. This is a great effort by these guys. How about some of your decisions? You went up top a couple of times. You went forward on fourth down, got a I mean, touchdown. We just were trying to win. Yeah. Just trying to win. And the defense held up scoreless again in the second half. The fifth time this season you've held an opponent scoreless in the second half. Well, we've done that a lot. Yeah. And uh, so that's, uh, they. I think, in seven games, the opponents have scored a total of 10 points. Uh, you know, and so they, we played great in the second half most of the year. Coach, last question for you. Obviously, you said it's not a rivalry unless you can beat the opposing team. You beat them today. Is this Fresno State game a rivalry you know, again? I think we're working back in that direction. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. All right, a little happier Coach told me after the game. Back up to you, Greg. No, he didn't want to talk to Scott at halftime. He was so mad about not getting the final playoff. But I go back to the fourth and two, Mike. I think the play of the game was from Coach Tomey when he did not punt the ball. He went for it, and he went deep to James Jones for the touchdown that broke the tie. Absolutely. After the trade-off of penalties and decisions to make, Coach Tomey came back in true Dick Tomey fashion, went after Fresno State downfield. That's what Dick Tomey does. That's why he's one of the best in the game and really set the tone for the second half. So it's all good here in San Jose. They get their eighth victory and they're out of the bowl game for the first time in 16 years and they beat Fresno for the first time in 16 years as well. Comcast Sportsnet production vehicles provided by Heritage Ford of Modesto. To Frantis on the game's first play. To Broussard, they went ahead 14-0 and wound up winning it by the score of 24-14. This has been a presentation of Comcast Sportsnet. For more information, including upcoming schedules and events, log on to ComcastSportsnet.com. For Scott Marsh on the sidelines, for Mike Pulaski, you had a good day. The Bears won, and the Spartans won here in San Jose. Greg Papa saying so long.